Good, Good evening, Ken. everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Tuesday, December 15th, Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, let's, uh, Bill, would you lead us in the uh, pledge? Sure. Tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. All right. Um, I'm going to start with uh, citizens input. Uh, no one uh, emailed, no one uh, is zooming in, and no one's in the audience. So we'll move on to uh, COVID-19 update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm bring this numbers up. So um, there's a little bit of news report on, on the COVID front, obviously. Uh, numbers have uh, stabilized in Foxborough. They were, um, it looks like they're the same number they were uh, two weeks ago. We were up around 91 cases then, and it's 91 cases as of today. Um, it, the, uh, the good news is that we, we no longer have a hospitalization to report. We had one hospitalization in the last, last meeting, and, um, and numbers actually ticked up to as high as about 93, 95 cases at one point, and then they started to slip back a little bit. So we're good, to, we're starting to trend in the right direction. And, and based on what I'm hearing, I heard on the radio today, that um, doctor, I listen to Dr. Scott leave every morning, um, and uh, he indicated that numbers starting, are starting to stabilize in places around the country as well. So we're, we're following the national trend in that respect. We are at 3.72% uh, positivity rate, which is still leaves us in the yellow category state on a statewide basis. So, and we've not inched into the, uh, the red category at all during this during this phase so that's it's good to see that as well um, the good news on the front of uh, of, of, uh, of, of vaccinations is that uh, yesterday that the state received its first dose doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccinations and we are uh, in and the governor reported today that he expects to see about 300,000 cases 300,000 doses will be available prior to the end of the end of the calendar year so they are on full scale uh, approach towards dealing with this right now and so it's good news for the public to know uh, we don't have specific information about Foxborough at this point in time uh, when we will actually receive it and when we do we certainly will let everybody know um, we have an, uh, we've been getting daily updates and talking to folks uh, through the fire department and uh, the public health departments to find out where we are with that but so far no information to report in terms of what we're going to uh, how when we're going to receive it now, obviously, the, the health care workers are getting prioritized first. Uh, elderly folks uh, above 65 will be prioritized after that. And then, uh, and then also then municipal workers and state workers will be, will, be, will be given some consideration. The general public probably won't see uh, the availability of vaccinations on a regular basis until sometime likely in April, uh, from what I'm hearing. So, uh, but clearly, they're going to work from the, the most serious situations down and backwards. Uh, the people that are most vulnerable, so to speak, uh, toward, and backwards towards to, to try and address that uh, situation for getting those people inoculated as soon as possible. Clearly, there are other companies other than, than Pfizer who are coming out with new uh, uh, vaccines. Uh, uh, Moderna is, coming, is supposed to be getting uh, approval through the, through the federal government, uh, the uh, FDA, uh, as early as uh, next week. Uh, we may see something come out of that. Uh, I know they're looking for a preliminary approval this week. And then if it gets done, it gets approved, it may get approved uh, as early as early part of next week or maybe this weekend. We'll see, see what happens. So that's the latest on the COVID front. Uh, things, things have been pushed back to phase, phase three, step one on an, op on an operating basis, uh, which means that, um, that percentages of attendance and, and, and uh, occupancy rate have been pushed back to uh, half of what they were prior to uh, that pushback. So if it was 50%, now it's 25%, et cetera. So we're certainly concerned about what that means to local businesses and to restaurant owners uh, particularly because now we're dealing with cold weather on top of that. And so we know it's a concern that it's impacting them, particularly in, in this kind of a situation. So we, we continue to stand by and, and hope that we can get through this next phase of it as soon as possible. And last but not least, the, the emphasis this morning from the governor was to was to make sure that we do our, the very best we can around the holiday season. Now we know we just came off of 
of Thanksgiving where the prediction was that through, through Thanksgiving we would end up with a situation where we'd have a spike and that lo and behold that's exactly what we saw. So the concern is that we may see a similar type of spike right after the, the, the Christmas holiday and, and then of course the following New Year's holiday. So those are, you know, particularly New Year's is one that's, a, that's very crowd intensive in many cases. Uh, I doubt very much we'll see the ball drop to a huge crowd in New York this year. Uh, I'd be very surprised to see that. But you never know. I mean, people, some people feel very strongly that they want to stay, up, stay with tradition. But the other side of that is that we could be doing so in, in harming the, the, the general public in the, in the same step. So let's be very careful. The word out to everybody is, is use good judgment, use the best, take the be best precautions you can take, and just use, uh, use and consider everybody around you, not just your, your own family, but families of others as well. And that's it. And, other than that, I want to wish everybody a very, very merry and merry Christmas and happy holidays and hope everybody stays safe throughout that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just one question, sure. Bill. Uh, I know that the city of Boston, mm -hmm. a serious problem that we have, uh, has also shut down gyms. And I know we have uh, three particular gyms, the Y, uh, the one fit factory mm -hmm. and also down on Moore Street. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether uh, the Board of Health, uh, their agent, could uh, do an inspection and maybe report back to both the Board of Health and, as well as us as to whether those should remain open. Uh, we we just, that. so that's a very good question, uh, Ed. So I, I think. We are going to, we've actually just in the past week uh, had a concern expressed to us about you know, making sure that those places were safe and we had an inspection done this past week and they were compliant, okay. um, at least at one of the facilities that we've seen. Uh, the Y and but they're taking very good measures to, to stay safe over there. Uh, the other one uh, on Moore Street, I'm not familiar with, but I, I know that um, uh, we'll have to take a, take a look at that and I'll, I'll make that known tomorrow morning at our, at our staff meeting. Okay. okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, one other question, Bill. Uh, does it affect Town Hall, the uh, decrease in? Uh, no, it does not. Well, it does in terms of crowds. I mean, we can't obviously we can't we we can't uh, increase our crowd size in the building at all. So we ha we're back to the percentage we were before, which was I think it's what forty percent, if I'm not mistaken. I, I believe so. Yeah, I believe as that. far as this room, yeah. um, you know, we the <laughs> capacity that we could have in here is actually larger than what we can fit with the social distancing. Right. You know, so, so I think we can have 25 people here, but we can't safely have 25 people in here. Right. So in some cases, you have to look at that. Can you keep the six foot distance around? But staff wise, you guys, you guys are good. You don't, you, you don't have to, to have anybody nod or coming and going just. No, we, we've remained, uh, we've used good, again, good judgment. And um, here's, here's the good news. And the, the good news that comes with the bad news is the fact that, you know, everybody's, they're projecting a very big snowstorm for Thursday of this week. Well, the organization has already pivoted towards, you know, working virtually if they have to. So if we have to work virtually on Thursday, we'll do that now because we have that capability. And um, so it means that it, we could have a pretty, pretty sizable storm. Doesn't mean we have to put people in danger by putting them, bring them here for, for work. We can still work them from home and, uh, and still get some work done and still uh, be able to service the public. But in, organizationally, no, we, we, we've had a very good response from the town. People have been, uh, the employees have been terrific and, and residents have been very supportive as well. So we, we really do appreciate that. So generally speaking, we're in good shape, but um, we worry just like everybody else does every on a single day, God forbid anything happens. So I will tell one good story. We thought we had a little bit of a scare within the past uh, two weeks uh, with one employee been possibly exposed. And so what happened was uh, the fire chief brought in, the, uh, brought in his staff and they tested everybody in the building and everybody came back negative. So, so we were able to do that and, and turn around things pretty quickly. So if we see something or hear something, we, we take appropriate steps to, to deal with it. And then we move, we get right back into where we are. Okay. One, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, that's <coughs> been helpful in allowing us to keep <coughs> the full staff in here and not go over the capacity in the building is that a lot of people have gotten used to uh, ma making appointments, uh, paying right. online, you know, doing some of their remote work and, and still being able uh, to function as a full staff here in Town Hall. So that's actually, we've seen just less traffic coming through. 
So it's That's actually been, true. you know, we've become more efficient. And I think part of that is because the public is, is doesn't want to be out as much. And, and the other part of it is that they've learned that they can do a lot of their business through the town hall without actually physically coming here. So they're gaining confidence in the, in the way that that can be done, that, that business can be transacted. And it, sometimes it takes something like this to actually have that work in our favor. So that's a, that's a positive, positive thing in that respect. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, next up we have a uh, presentation from uh, Steve Sacco uh, from uh, Schneider Electric. Come on up. You can grab a seat here. Thank you, Steve. Hi, good evening. Um, Schneider Electric, whether you call it Schneider Electric or Invensys or the Foxborough Company, has really been a strong partner with the town for more than 100 years. Um, supporting town initiatives, uh, having our employees uh, be involved in community events, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the earlier part of this year, pre-COVID, which seems like ages ago, um, in discussions with Bill and others, uh, Schneider made a substantial commitment uh, to the town in two areas. One was to provide uh, STEM scholarships for graduating seniors. And the other was to support with funding a proposed uh, town common lighting project, really with the intention of providing uh, you know, safe, efficient, modern infrastructure on the town common, really to benefit the town and the people. And so um, I'm here tonight, it's my great pleasure to present the town with a check for $150,000 uh, to support this initiative. And it's our way of saying thanks for the partnership. And uh, you know, our motto at Schneider is life is on. And we hope that through this lighting project, the town, the community, the people will also have life is on. Thank you. And the common will be on too, it's even better. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's a round of applause right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly something that's been needed and talked about for a while up at, up at the Common and for you guys to step up uh, uh, and uh, just go right forward and go right to what we need is, is, is outstanding. Any um, time frame? Um, so that you know just a, yeah, a couple of updates on that is that we were planning on starting uh, looking at starting the, the construction aspect of that this week. I'm not sure we're going to get to it now, <laughs> and, and <laughs> unfortunately, but um, at least getting the underground conduit done, placed this year, that's still our plan. Uh, we've actually looked at a design for, and we've actually come up with a couple of ideas for uh, the lighting design, and um, we've uh, actually met with the Historic Commission to go over that with them, so as to make sure they're in support of what we're putting forward. And, um, and I think uh, the facilities department is doing an excellent job along with DPW to coordinate the actual construction phase. And then we will get to a point where we'll actually bring in an electric, electrical crew to actually install uh, the entire system. But it's been, it's been a long time that, since that system has been replaced. And it's, it's really, you can tell, there's a number of lights that, 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 haven't, that, that work on and off. You know, they're not consistent. There's a lot of that is the is direct berry line as opposed to conduit. So the conduit, the, obviously, that's the more of the code for today's, under today's standard. But, so that's what we're going to, it's probably going to be code compliant. So Barry's happy to hear that, yeah. <laughs> uh, the new building commissioner, and um, and we'll make sure that uh, it's it's a it's a first rate job, and this this allows us to do that with the amount of funds that received here because we estimate the job to be around two hundred thousand dollars. The town has actually committed about sixty thousand dollars towards that project, that was voted on by town meeting, so we've got about two hundred and ten thousand dollars to work with to make the project work. Um, I just wanted to read on behalf uh, the letter that I received. Um, on behalf of, the, of uh, Steve, who, who sent this uh, to us a couple of days ago in anticipation of tonight's meeting with, along with the check itself. It says, on behalf of uh, Schneider Electric, I'm very pleased to transmit the enclosed donation to the town of Foxborough in the amount of $150,000 in support of the town's ongoing efforts to modernize the lighting infrastructure at Foxborough Town Common. The modernization project will enhance the efficiency of the electrical infrastructure in a safe and sustainable manner ensuring that the town common remains a central point of community action and activities now and for the future generations. With this donation, we at Snyder Electric are excited to be able to continue our relationship with the town of Foxborough that goes back more than a century. 
We, are, we and our employees are proud of the company's long association with the town and our active leadership role in helping to advance the needs of important business, business, civic, and educational initiatives. Our aim is to support the communities, with, is to support the communities where we have a presence and that our, and that our employees call their home. We believe strongly in investing in Foxborough and are proud to fund this important project, which will benefit Foxborough citizens and our employees for years to come. And signed, Steve Sacco, Vice President of Safety, Environmental, and Real Estate. Any uh, comments from the board? Other than another round of applause? Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> this is just to a big, a big totally thank awesome. you. Yeah, I mean, I just want, want to say that um, I've been involved with Friends of Foxborough Recreation when we just did the tree lighting, just the one tree, and how exciting it is that I, I can't even imagine when we get to the point where the whole common is lit, how wonderful it's going to be. You know, a big, big thank you. Very yeah, big looking big. forward to the uh, lighting ceremony, right? <laughs> yeah. Next year at this time, Next we hope year, that'll be 20, 20, 2021 will be a better year to be brighter Absolutely. for everybody. Absolutely. Thank you again, Steve. Thanks for coming. Thanks thank for you. My pleasure. So, Mr. Chairman, if, if, we, if we, if the board could take a motion to address that, staff, oh, yeah. to, uh, to, yeah. to accept the, oh, yeah. the gift on behalf. Absolutely. So. It is with great gratitude that I would like to make this motion to accept the $150,000 donation from Snyder Electric for Foxborough Town Common Electrical and Structural Upgrades. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, Aye. We actually have to do a roll call vote for each. We actually had an open meeting last session today, and we learned that we have to take a roll call vote if we have a remote participa uh, participation. On, on, on anything we on do every, now. On every single vote. To make yes. sure that everybody knows Leah voted. Yes, Correct. Okay. that's right. So, Chris? Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Christina, and thank you. Thank you again, Steve. sir. Thanks again, Steve. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, next up on the agenda, town manager, introduction of our new building commissioner. So I'm very pleased to introduce to you tonight, Barry, why don't you come on up and have a seat in front of, in front of the board. And uh, to introduce Good to you, <laughs> this is Barry Ringler. Barry is our new building commissioner, uh, new to the position and just uh, new, not, but not new to the business. Barry's been in the business for almost 20 years as a, as a building official. Um, he has served in the town of Brookline for the past 19 years as an as a, as a, uh, inspector and uh, associate uh, building official. And he has done a terrific job uh, just finding his way through here and, and really glad that he, he came here to support us. A very difficult position to fill. Uh, he knows that as well as we do. So uh, it's been very challenging, and, but we're really glad, glad we're able to come across him. And the good news is that he lives in Walpole. <laughs> so so, they won't, so ch driving won't be a challenge for him. In fact, it probably takes him closer to get here than, than most places he likes to go to, so right? So, so thank you, Barry, for being here. If you have anything you want to say? Yeah, thank you for having me, and thank you all for this great opportunity uh, to uh, be the building commissioner for the town of Foxborough. As uh, Bill was saying, I'm from Walpole. My wife, Carolyn, and I have two kids, uh, Leo and Lauren, 17 and 15, and we have a little German schnauzer named Sparky. He's 10. <laughs> uh, but uh, as Bill says, I worked in Brookline for 19 years. I was a senior inspector there uh, for the past 10. Um, and, uh, you know, being a dad and wanting to be with the kids and be home kept me there. Long drive, as you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, to get to Brookline. But I did that sacrifice to be with my family to be, uh, you know, a dad. Like we all want to be with our families. Right. Uh, but now uh, I'm at a point where my son is going off to college and my daughter is, you know, a sophomore and I mean, I still want to be a dad, but uh, I think now is the time for me to start looking to be uh, management, to be uh, and devote more time, uh, you know, like these night meetings. Um, and, uh, you know, coincidentally enough, Fox Paul right. was, was interested and uh, offered the position. So I'm uh, very proud and, and grateful uh, for the opportunity and thank you all so much uh, for the opportunity to serve as your building commissioner. For nice job, Barry, appreciate it. When, right. when did you actually start? I started last Monday. Yeah. yeah, I started last Monday. So he knows where the parking lot is. He yeah. knows where, where to go to get something to eat. You know, and, and I haven't been out to eat yet. No, no that <laughs> all the essentials, but he knows what the essentials are at this point. So he's working, he's working it through. So, 
Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Welcome Excellent. aboard. It's good to Welcome. see you. Right. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Right. Thank I met you. Barry the other day. Uh, Mike brought me down to introduce while I was up doing the agenda, and uh, uh, I was suitably, suitably impressed in just the 15 minutes we were together with oh. your knowledge and uh, showed us a bunch of things, uh, pulled up stuff on the computer and sure. already jumping right in with the sure. Borough School project. Sure. I mean, sure. you know, uh, yeah. he know, he's getting to know his way around already. Yes, and, yes. Uh, I've been impressed uh, yeah, by that as well. So oh, thank you. We had a thank great you. little meet and greet and I walked away saying, eh, this is going to be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. There's no question. We're going to get it right. His, his knowledge of building code and uh, zoning is as good as I've seen in anyone in this business uh, in a long, long time. So I'm really glad that we were able to get him to come here. So thank you. Thank you. Barry. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Barry. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you. Excellent. All okay, right. well, that's it. There you go. See? You're off. All right. You're off and running. All right. Thank you. You'll be Thanks, Barry. 10 minutes. I think I can stay longer. <laughs> <laughs> Bill knows. I'll tell you. That's right. Day. You, you can sit in back and watch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, Barry. Thank Good to much. see you all. Bye-bye, right. bye, Barry. <laughs> all right. Um, Next on the agenda, uh, Red Robin application for change of manager. Oh, is anyone going to represent them or? Um, the new manager is online yes. and coming online right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm here. Welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about the change and who's taken over? Yeah, uh, my name is John Massaro. Um, yeah, I've taken over. I've been there about four months at the uh, Foxborough location for Red Robin. Um, I've been with Red Robin for eight years. Um, I love being here. I've been um, in this part of the country for about two years, and I love it so far. So I'm um, planning to make it uh, definitely for, for good. So. And is, is this your first shot at management, or have you been a manager of one of the other shops? No, I've been a general manager. Um, I was a general manager at the one in California, which was in Chino. Then they brought me out here, and um, I was a general manager at South Shore. They closed down because of COVID um, so far. So then uh, they put me um, over in Foxborough to take over that location just because it wasn't running the way they wanted it to. So um, they brought me in so we can um, clean it up and make it uh, run like a red robin again. Great. Uh, any questions from the board? No. I didn't have any. The application looked like it was all put yeah, together. Yeah, it was pretty uh, boilerplate. Actually, the only looking at it again, the only one question: um, hours per week. It says forty. I mean, is that typical for a restaurant manager to only work forty no, hours a week? I'm sorry for interrupting. It's more like um, uh, fifty to sixty. Okay. okay. And uh, how about our? We always have the question about Fox Cares. John, have you heard about Fox Cares that Tom down at Tavolino um, runs? I, I'm sorry, I have not heard of Fox Cares. All right, you may just want to connect with him, all the uh, liquor license owners or managers um, get together with training and you know best practices and such. So since he's right there at Patriot Place, it may just be worth a reach out to him. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. I will. Thank you, Leah. Uh, any other questions? Okay. No. Motion to approve the change of manager for Red Robin International, Inc., DBA, Red Robin, Gourmet Burgers and Spirits from Ashley Wyatt to John Massaro. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. All right. Thanks, John. John, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up on the agenda, Chief, you wouldn't mind uh, coming up early, would you? Uh, All right, because we can do other stuff if you want. <laughs> nope, nope, we're good. <laughs> you can wait longer. It's okay. <laughs> He can bring Barry back up. <laughs> <laughs> he does a little oh, song and song and pony right. show. Yeah, he's like, we're back on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Chief, talk to us a little bit about this uh, intermunicipal agreement uh, with the town of uh, Norfolk. 
So kind of piggybacking on some of the success we had with SEMREC, and uh, that was all done under an intermunicipal agreement. Um, I've been talking with some of my colleagues uh, in the area, and one of the big difficulties people have is getting qualified people to work on that fire apparatus. It's a real specialty. So I kind of went back to the drawing board. We, had, we, we talked about a joint venture with the uh, highway department a couple of years ago, and the, the position ultimately didn't end up getting funded. So I had to go and uh, find a mechanic after one of ours retired. I ended up really hitting the lottery and found a uh, firefighter paramedic, but it also the gentleman's a fully certified diesel mechanic. Wow. He worked for the Boston Fire Department uh, on their motor squad uh, for a couple of years, and he's uh, a fully certified paramedic and everything else. So that's, I call him a unicorn, because he, he's like, <laughs> he once in a lifetime. Um, and uh, he works a regular shift with me, and one of the things that, uh, so when he's working, he obviously works on fire apparatus when there's no calls. Um, and then occasionally, if he has to work uh, his days off, he'll work overtime to, if there's you know, major overhauls or repairs, things he has to do. Uh, one of the challenges for the, like a town like Norfolk, they don't have anybody in-house to work on their fire apparatus. So oftentimes, it'll either go to the DPW garage. Most oftentimes, it goes to uh, one of the area truck dealerships where they're paying a premium and also waiting uh, long term to get their, their trucks fixed. And um, that kind of sparked a conversation between myself and the, uh, the, the North Fork Deputy Fire Chief. And he, he kind of brought the idea up if I would ever be interested in servicing his fire apparatus. He has two Class A engines um, that, they, that they utilize. And when one goes down and it's out of service, they, they need it back as quickly as possible. And sometimes it sits in a, a yard somewhere for, you know, sometimes weeks while they're waiting for somebody to repair it. So there's you no know, long backlogs and stuff. So um, we, we kind of had a discussion. I kind of kicked it around with Bill. You know, he, he didn't seem to think it was, uh, you know, a, a stretch. So we talked to Norfolk. We had the attorneys draw up an intermunicipal agreement. So I think we're both protected liability-wise. It's, uh, it's very technical and legal in nature, but <laughs> they assure me that we're, we're protected. And, uh, you know, our town attorney, Pat Costello, has reviewed it. Norfolk's attorney has, has reviewed it. And um, Norfolk selectmen have already seen it and voted on it. And uh, they voted in the affirmative to go forward. Sure. So um, I'm here tonight just to see if, if you guys had any interest in, in possibly doing this venture. Um, I think it, it would be good. It's good for the town. I think uh, it would... Um, Put some uh, money in the coffers to kind of offset our maintenance costs. I think I think that's a good a good thing. It also keeps the mechanic here in town. So when he's off duty, we would pay him overtime to work on uh, people's vehicles. The going rate for a mechanic right now at a, a commercial shop is anywhere between 145 and 160 dollars an hour. Uh, we would pay him uh, 45 dollars an hour, which is roughly his overtime rate. We would charge a rate of about 95 dollars an hour, so the town would make 50 dollars an hour for every hour he worked on someone's truck. I think that's that's pretty fair. I, uh, the town of Norfolk's getting a value. This gentleman's putting some money in his pocket, and the town's getting a benefit as well. So, just want to see what you guys thought about that. Win, win, win. Yeah, it seems win, like win. it. Yeah. Uh, any questions from the board? I did have a few. I, I called Bill on the ride home today just to kind of wrap my head a little further around this. So, mm -hmm. right now, this individual is a firefighter paramedic or is he a mechanic he's both so he does a normal firefighter shift and if something breaks he works on the he, yeah he does all yeah he does all the preventative maintenance and repairs while he's on duty so we have we have another mechanic uh another firefighter mechanic they split the fleet um owen's the gentleman's name that works on the heavy he's a heavy equipment mechanic he does the uh the, he's a specializes in fire apparatus so that's all the pumps he's certified he's fully uh licensed by you know all those different agencies to do that and then we have another gentleman that works on like the f550 chassis and lower the ambulances the staff vehicles and things like that okay. so um so the the overtime aspect so if he's working on norfolk's equipment it would be on an overtime it wouldn't be it would not be on, on regular, regular no. time no okay um and one of the questions i had for bill and i think he answered it but um like that money that we are getting from norfolk where does that go I think it would either go into, so we have a, um, we have an apparatus account that when we bill for certain things, that money goes into the apparatus account and then that goes back into the pay for service or pay for vehicles and, and things like that, or it would go to the general fund. But I, I think we, we spoke to George just high level. I, it would seem to fit to go into that account, but 
either way it would come back to the, either through the general fund or through that apparatus revolving account. If it did go to the general fund, it necessarily wouldn't get earmarked back to the fire department. Well, we'd have would to make it? an appropriation if we did it that way. Uh, that's why uh, preferred, the, preferred, the preferred course of action is to put it through the revolving fund. That's why you know, we did talk about that with George, and he seemed to think that was, a, that was workable to do it that way. Do we know a definitive if it is, like, doable and, and it I, I think legally it's okay I just the, the, the only question is um, we we've never done this before so yeah. that's just the only difference and don't get me wrong at all no. I'm like I said to Bill on the phone anything you've ever thought of has turned to gold <laughs> like Midas yeah, exactly. but I just you know when I first saw this I said to Bill I'm like okay do we have a mechanic sitting there that has plenty of time on his hands <laughs> no you know um, no and selfishly what this does is it is you know so he's a mechanic on his shit in when he's not working for me, he's going to be working on fire trucks somewhere. I would rather it be under my roof, and if something of mine breaks, or ours, yeah. he's going to be there to fix it. He's not going to be somewhere else where we have to call him and try to get a hold of him and get him to come in. So that, right. that's how I was just being, <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's kind so, of survival on my end, too. So, so my, my biggest concerns, or, or questions, really, that needed answered was, um, you know, one of them big is the liability. So he works on Norfolk's fire equipment. They go out and you know the brakes go out or something. I mean, is Foxborough yeah. at all liable? You guys have checked all that and everything's good. Yeah, we have a. I have a, um, and we could I could share this with you. It was like a bullet list of how, and it's honestly it's written by an attorney, so it's difficult it to like understand. Pat Costello wrote this. But Pat yeah. Costello assures us that we're we're indemnified and we're okay. you know we're protected from a liability under the intermissible agreement. So yeah. And, and the last thing we do with agreements like this is that we, we thoroughly review it with the insurance company, our insurance company, Maya, before then. I had a conversation with them already about this. That they, and they, they view this as being uh, no different than a, than a mutual aid agreement, which, which would indemnify the town in those situations. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, so I guess for now, I mean, those are, were some of my questions and concerns, and I think I feel a little bit better. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had almost the, almost the same exact questions as you, um, Chris. Um, and when we talk about the revolving fund, that's the town revolving fund or no, the, the fire the, revolving fund? The fire department's fund. apparatus revolving fund. Okay. Okay, so it goes, if you go into that account as opposed to just a, a general revolving account. Okay. Okay. All right, and that still would go through um, the budget process. As no, revolving as accounts don't typically go through the, the uh, it's just whether well, the money comes out, the money goes back in. It just it, it basically basically pays for itself is what it is. Okay, so okay. it wouldn't be spent on anything else other than apparatus and. Um, right. I guess what I'm getting at. So we have extra money coming in. That doesn't mean it's just you know no you know you know me Mike no yeah. offense. Yep. It's just it's not being just um, spent on um, even though it's apparatus. Or is it still keeping? us in line with what our spending is and we don't say okay we have this extra money so we're going to do this so yeah. so what that means effectively is that we should theoretically have have uh not be not the town would not be would have as much requirement to fund our repair accounts because mm -hmm. we have more money coming in from other sources now mm -hmm. so the whole idea was to turn this into a a you know a self-paying for our, our repairs oh, absolutely. from outside absolutely. the organization. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. a great idea. Yeah. yeah, that's one of our most, you know, we spend a, we spend quite a bit of money on repairing apparatus. It's expensive and, you yeah. know, it's... Yeah, so it's, it'll, it'll turn, uh, become a savings for the town, right. too. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I have a hunch it's going to catch because on, if, too. If you, needed, <laughs> yeah. if you needed a piece of equipment fixed or, some, or, or something, and even if that money wasn't in that revolving account, I mean, the equipment has to be fixed. It has to be fixed. Right. So it, it, would, it, would, it has to be paid for, and you would, right. yep. it would go so, from, from that, re, if not in that revolving, it would have to come into your budget. So it, it's, right. it's, yeah. a, it it's truly a question of a which win. pocket you pull right. that out of, yeah. is what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So instead of, yeah, instead of going, you know, after the taxation, it would just come yeah. out of that. It would, it, yeah. it's, it's actually a little bit of a relief for the typical budget. Right, so, so I mean, the key point here is that we're not in it to make, make money, we're here in it to just to pay for our costs, so that, and, and if we make any money that we do make would go towards the offset of our costs for our, uh, our, office, our, uh, our equipment. Yeah, the town made the investment that we have the facility, we, we maintain the facility, we have all the equipment, we have all the tools, you know, we might as well utilize it to its fullest. So Chief, would the, um, so would the, um 
the equipment come here to Foxborough? Yes. Oh, yeah. And it'll get worked worked yep. on here. Yeah, they drop it off and then yep. they come pick it up when we're done. Yep. Yeah, we don't we don't bring it to them or to take it from them. We they bring it to us and they pick it up. Yeah. Leah, did you have any questions? No, another great idea, proactive from Chief Kelleher. So very much appreciated. And um, I think most of the questions that I've have have been answered. And you know, for anyone at home, if this ever isn't working out, from what I read, it looks like with ten days' notice, either town can decide to terminate the agreement too. From what I understand, so exactly. um, although it is a three-year agreement, it does have some flexibility in there. That's correct. Absolutely. All right. Great. Any, uh, Ed, yeah, I'm all you? set. Thank you. Uh, I'm good too. Yeah. All right. um, another gold nugget. <laughs> Thank you. Well, hopefully, Thank you. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> we got be the term. Oh, yeah. To be the term. Not official yet. <laughs> but until uh, the uh, clerk sings. All right. Motion to approve the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Norfolk. Second. Any further discussion? One thing under further discussion. So do you anticipate any other towns wanting to jump into this? <laughs> How are you going to handle that? We'll come back. I'll come back. No, no, but I mean, so say all the towns that are in Semrec want in on this. Oh, we don't. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, we would have to be, I think, Rentham's expressed interest. Yeah. And they have, they, you know, they have a copy of the intermunicipal agreement. Uh, their town manager has been discussing with their fire chief, and I. What I'm getting at is, you can only stretch a mechanic so far. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's first come first serve. Yeah. So, so yeah. we wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. You know, like Norfolk's fleet's much smaller than ours, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, Rentham is, and they're close. I, I, I think that might be it. Yeah. You okay. know, unless we, you know, there's a look at some other things, but. Okay. Yeah. Chief, do you have an idea in your head? Like, I'm just throwing out a number. Okay. Um, our mechanic should be able to work on uh, two days a week, or you know, yep. or you, you have you have an idea. And yeah, so what, we did what a, his availability would be. Yep. Yeah, and he and he's uh, very. Um, so we, yeah, we have a schedule of all their apparatus, and then what what the cost is, and we, you know, we've benchmarked it against other service other service centers. So we're competitive. We're about twenty to twenty five percent less, and it still gives us uh, gives the town flexibility. There's you know there's built in you know uh, cash flow to to help fund the program obviously his his rates included in that but then we we make money off of his rate as well so yeah so if other towns want, wanted to jump in I, i'm like again i'm just throwing i don't know how often the apparatus is worked on but so to say you you worked on something um in norfolk this week yeah. and next week you know we're looking good here norfolk doesn't come and then somebody else you know comes in so the more towns that would join kind of gives you the opportunity so you know like bill kind of said first come first serve yeah um so if more towns come in it does give you the opportunity to yeah some chiefs are very excited because it, it, it's very difficult to and it's not so much i mean it, the money is what it is like you, you have to pay it because you have to get the truck back but it's the wait time yeah. it's having a truck sit somewhere for weeks and we've been victim of that too so the other good thing is that you know we have a, a young individual uh he's got a couple of years on the department very interested in mechanics he he actually I put him on the same group as the mechanic so he's like his apprentice now he's going through the certification process so he's actually got Jason Galanti is his name he's got uh, three certifications now towards his master level mechanics so I think there's seven designations he has to get so we're also we have someone in the pipeline so it's you know there's a succession plan there you know something happens to the mechanic we have a backup plan too so it's it's good so and he's learning from this this kid's one of the best in the industry so we're very fortunate here Great. Well thought out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Roll Chris, call. yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. All right. Uh, in keeping with the uh, department head updates uh, during our meetings, uh, this is uh, Bill's update. Uh, combination update and uh, progress report. Great, so thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, you have before you tonight, and, um, and you see up on the, on the board tonight, a, uh, an update schedule or, or a presentation relative to where we are with the goals uh, that the board set out uh, back, I think it was in June of this, of this year. And uh, there's a lot of good news to report in this report, so I'm, I'm gonna roll through it tonight for you as best I can. With, um, with, with trying to give you uh, some of the highlights and, 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 and give you an a progress report in terms of where we are exactly. 
The good news is that over, overall, we're about 85% in the, in the in the in progress or completed phase. So we've still got a few things that are still in the planning phase and still need to be worked on. But the, one of the biggest ones uh, that, that we're going to deal with in terms that still needs work on is the communications piece. But we do have a planned presentation for uh, February of next year, of 2021, to give you an update on that. So we, we, it's not that we're letting it go. We're just, just not. We've given priority to other things given the circumstances that we've been under in the past year. So I'm, I'm pleased we've probably made a lot of progress, but there are still things we need to work on. So, so looking at the uh, the first, um, the first goal, uh, which is the first major goal, is to protect and enhance the financial health of the town. And as the first uh, first uh, objective is to continue working with the finance team and department heads to ensure the approved budget is correctly appropriated to use the funds as spent consistent with the identified intent and is used efficiently and responsibly. The finance department and uh, the contributors of the finance department and department heads, and as a mid-year, all department expenditures appear to be on track. Expenditures, on, in some instances, may appear to be overly inflated due to COVID-related expenses. However, after factoring in the, the grants received from the various sources, department budgets are well within the, their expected expenses. Uh, and under B, the, B, the, uh, the second objective is alternative and su supplemental uh, funding sources are sought whenever possible through the grants, endowments, or gifts to enhance the delivery of town services. And that uh, goes to all department heads. And you'll see that this is, this is really a good story for us to talk about. And that is, when I, when I looked at this, I, I was actually blown away by this. And that we, um, the goal, the board had actually said to me, you know, do what you can to try and get as much money as you can into the community during, during the upcoming year because of the challenges we're going to face. Well, some of the money has come, as we know, from the federal government, but other sources have been, have been brought to the table as well. And the department heads have collectively done a terrific job of bringing more funds to, funds to the town. And I'm very pleased to announce that this town has brought in $6.8 million in this, uh, in this past year Towards, the, towards use uh, on both the town and school sides for expenses above and beyond what's been appropriated in, within the town's budget. So that's an extraordinary measure, which I, when I, in asking anyone, they, they, they pretty much said, well, maybe a million, million, two or two million dollars. And I, in fact, that was what I thought until I started looking at it, and all of a sudden, all these different categories popped up, including the one you just saw tonight was $150,000 from Snyder Electric. So these are all things that we've been working on over, over the past year and that have fairly come to, come to fruition and we've actually collected on either state level, federal level, or endowments or, or, or contributors. And uh, we're so very, very grateful that we're in that position compared to other communities in that regard. So that's, uh, that's a very important step for us to consider. All right, moving along, the, the, to promote fiscal discipline in all departments by annually seeking new areas to save or to expand service delivery in every department without incurring additional funding for the town. And again, that's department heads. Uh, the contributors towards that as well. And multiple, multiple ex 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 examples have been used since July 1. Fire Department is doing COVID testing with other town agencies and offsetting costs of providing the service. Five vehicles from neighboring towns will soon be repaired under utilizing the new Fox Foxborough's yeah. maintenance facility. Costs will be more competitive for those towns while Foxborough will be able to receive its cost while generating a, a, a profit that will offset the cost of repairs to our own vehicles. Semrick is now saving, saving the town of Foxborough, the new regional dispatch facility, about $700,000 a year. So we're going to continue to, to direct, address those things as we go through um, throughout the year. We have that conversation a lot about strategically how we can do a better job of, of squeezing every a bit of uh, savings out, of the, out of, the, of the things that we do or look for new ways so we can find offsetting revenues to, to pick up uh, services that we want to provide but can't do them through the general, uh, general budget. Under D, uh, we keep the, the Board of Select in, informed of any anticipated changes to appropriations, and that's the town manager and the finance department. Now, no noteworthy changes have, uh, the result in progress is no, 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 no noteworthy changes have been identified in the, at this time. Provisions have been made for some continuing COVID expenses, and we do anticipate further, further aid from the federal government for cities and towns. And just an update on that situation, there was, there seems to be progress this week. I know that the, the Congress is working towards finalizing a budget um, and a, an aid package for the, by the end of this week. So we're hoping to see, I know that the House, leader, House and Senate leadership are meeting tonight in Washington to try and, uh, try and come to some resolution. There appears to be a, a package on the table that's agreeable from, for both the, the House, uh, for both the Republicans and the Senate and the uh, Democrats. 
So there is progress being made in that. I do anticipate we'll get some, some additional aid in that area. All right, the work, um, and then the, the, the fifth uh, objective is to work strategically with policymakers to plan for any long-term capital needs and building improvements as identified. And that's the, with the CIP committee, the Permanent Municipal Building Committee, and uh, the Technology Subcommittee. As of December 20th, uh, December 2020, the Technology Subcommittee met in early December to review the status of ongoing projects and to determine what technology needs will require strategic considerations in the next several fiscal years. Funding strategies were discussed and, and are now being, uh, now being explored. As far as facilities are concerned, the borough school will be completed by next September. That would leave only two more elementary schools that would, that would have to be considered in the short term for renovations. On the municipal side, the feasibility study for a new senior center, community slash community center is now underway. Renovations and or additions to the DPW facility will be needed within the next five to plus five plus years. So those are the things that we're looking at right now. Most of the other facilities are in pretty good shape. Though what's good news, the good news is that because we have a facilities department, we are maintaining those facilities. The ones that have been built are being maintained at a very high level. So we won't be stuck with a major renovation project in, in, uh, in a short period of time after the, after the buildings were repaired. All right, so moving along. Uh, and the sixth uh, objective in this area was using modern transparency tools, work with the advisory committee, the, the finance director and the and director of accounting to prepare budgets, expenditures, and account for the financial needs of the town, all while pre all presenting a balanced budget for the, to the annual town meeting. And the people involved in that are the Director of Finance, the Assistant Director of Finance slash Accounting Director. As of, as of December 20th, the town is now using ClearGov as its new budget platform. The resulting, the resulting budget documents will be presented in January of 2021. Meetings with the, clear, with the Chair and the Vice Chair of the Advisory Committee have been ongoing since July 1st, with monthly updates and dialogue occurring on a regular basis. And it's, it was early as this afternoon we had further dialogue, but we're going to continue to meet right after July 1st, uh, January 1st, to, to update them where things stand. But we, uh, everybody has turned in their budgets at this, part, at this point in time, and uh, the doc documents will be prepared for my review with, uh, with the department heads uh, starting as early as next week. So we'll be, uh, I'll, I'll have that information in my hands by the end of this week. All right, with the, uh, with the rollout of the new town website, uh, uh, the developing communication strategy, um, uh, the strategy plan to promote awareness and re uh, with residents regarding <coughs> changes to policies and issues and actions of town government, make access to information more accessible and available to utilizing by utilizing the town's website and other media platforms, hold departments accountable for consistent, timely, and accurate communication, create innovative venues for open communication and preparedness for town meetings. And uh, the folks involved in that will be assistant town manager, the executive assistant, the community information specialist, department communications liaisons, and IT department staff. Uh, the town manager, assistant town manager, community information specialist have been working on a communication strategy for the town. Details of the strategy are being developed at this time. However, with, even, with the strategy, even with, while the strategy is being implemented, we have, have, been, have increased the town's communication presence on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, information is being presented in, in a readable and bullet type format to catch the attention of the, of the reader. Once the reader's attention is captured, they are, they are then led to, to a link that will provide them with greater details if they are seeking a, a, a greater amount of, of information on the topic. Moving on to C, create a plan uh, for department heads to meet with the Board of Selectmen no less than annually to discuss relevant issues and any participated strategic actions moving, involving their departments. And that, of course, involves the department heads, executive assistant, community information specialists. And meetings and presentations have been scheduled throughout the year for every operating department on the town side of government. So far, the reaction from the board and the public has been very, very favorable. So we, uh, that one's actually considered to be completed. I mean, we're, we're continuing. It's going to be ongoing. I, we got to categorize them as being ongoing and complete. And so because they'll be, obviously, just because we finish them doesn't mean we stop. We keep going and doing them as we go through them. Um, okay, moving on to uh, D, establish a clear and concise line of communication between the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager's Office, and other various appoint appointed boards, committees, identify <laughs> appropriate liaisons for each town board and committee elected or appointed to assist, to ensure that the that meeting notices and minutes have been properly, have properly filed with the town clerk and posted on the town's website. 
um, the assistant town clerk, assistant town manager, rather, the executive assistant, community information specialist, and community chairs, community chairs and staff liaisons of the people that will can contribute to that. And more work is needed in this area to determine who will be the actual liaisons for each board and committee. <clears throat> Um, keeping up with, with the minutes is a, is a constant effort. We need to come up with a, with a system that attracts the minute status of minutes and agendas for boards and committees under the town manager and board of selectmen's jurisdiction or to, and to verify full compliance. So it's something that we still haven't come up with a solution for, but we're trying to figure out what is the best way to do that. If anybody on the board has thoughts and ideas about how we might do that differently, we certainly welcome them, as, as we do from anyone else who would like to help us in that area because it's something that it's a challenge, and it's, it's some, something that we, we know is, has to be done, but it's, we haven't quite, uh, quite figured out the right solution for it yet. So we'll continue to have that conversation. All right, um, moving on to E of, uh, of this category. Uh, make a concerted effort to communicate with the schools, communities, community clubs, and organizations to encourage communication between the town and its stakeholders. The town manager, assistant town manager, community information specialist will be involved in the town side of government. To the greatest extent possible, this is being done now. Some limitations are occurring due now due to COVID-19 impacts, however. There is a consistent flow of information between the town and the schools, community clubs and organizations to make sure that events are being advertised, events in, are being, being held, and the community input is being made available as feedback to policymakers as, whenever possible. And then finally, in, uh, in the last one of, of, of uh, goal, th goal two was to challenge each department to present one or more ways to positively enhance customer service with town residents and or businesses. And all this goes to all department heads. And while customer service in the town remains high and customer complaints remain low, efforts are constantly made, uh, made to set the right example by treating all customers with respect and dignity. This is an ongoing uh, process and, inequality, and, and a quality that we seek when, with employees when we, when we hire them whether it is for a senior management position or a custodian of the building. Customer service is a high priority with all of us. And moving on to goal three, which is, um, it's, it has, again, uh, several subcategories, has four subcategories. Uh, for, the first objective is to increase dialogue, or the, the goal is to protect and enhance business and economic development. And, and the objective is to increase dialogue with business owners and committees in, 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 committees in an effort to have a more responsive and business-friendly community with added emphasis on uptown area of Foxborough. And involved in that discussion is the town planner, the director of public health, po the police chief. Um, and just to be, to, be, to, be, to, to be clear, I'm involved in a lot of these things as well, but I, did, I wanted to say who the other people are involved as well, and so these are the folks that, that are involved in this. This was, this was best, best identified with the creation of the Foxborough Commun a Common Business Collaborative. Ongoing meetings with businesses, uh, with the town staff as needed, has helped to create a new force to be reckoned with. This is important, and that is important to, tr to change and will occur in the business community with any part of town. That change was to occur from the within the community, in, 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 within the community while collaborating with the, with the town. So in short, a lot of times, you know, a lot of places, a lot of groups will look to the town for a direction on these things. But oftentimes it's better if it's reversed where the direction comes from the business community and it says, this is what we want to see happen. Can you help us get there? Right? And, we, and government should be in a better position to do that as opposed to lead the change instead of we should support it and, and, and push the change along. So I think it's, things tend to work a lot better when we do it that way. And then we're starting to see that now with this common business group uh, happening, happening in the center of town. I think, I think that's a great thing. Work with town businesses to uh, improve the opportunity for successful operations within the community, focus on specific issues with like parking, ease of access, encouraging high traffic areas, et cetera. And involved in that discussion are the planning director, DPW director, town engineer, chief of police, fire chief. And the, and, and the results of our discussions in this area have led to the traffic and parking improvements in the center of Foxborough. Collaborating with our, with our business partners helped solve the traffic backup on Route 140 and to the additional parking spaces located at Schneider Electric. Those discussions also led to the funding of the lighting improvements on the common that were generously donated by Schneider Electric. And then C is encourage and support the efforts to adhere to the town's current master plan. Uh, so this is actually two phases. There's, there's two pieces to this. Now, the first is encourage and support the efforts to the town master plan. And the second phase is support and encourage the planning board to further improve the town's master plan as part of a scheduled update. 
Well, the, the next update is not due for another three years, I believe. It's 2024 when that, when that will come up. So we'll be, we're in the planning stages for that now. However, as far as supporting the, the master plan, uh, more conversation is still needed, but, but, but generally speaking, the observations I've seen is that there's a very, there's a, there's a genuine interest in complying with, with the master plan. It, and for oftentimes when anything major gets discussed, it's pulled out and we refer to it and find out, okay, what is this, is this consistent with what we talked about? If there's gonna be a divergence from that, that's when it gets discussed obviously more openly with, with boards and committees, including this board and, and with the planning board to see if, if we wanna diverge, diverge from that. Clearly more conversation is needed to address this project and to determine a more specific timeline on when, when, the, when the new update will take, will take place and it will be a priority to, for, the, for the planning board and for the town when that occurs. All right, and the last uh, objective uh, is to collaborate with the MBTA, CSX, Mass Coastal Railway, and state and federal officials to, have, to help develop a comprehensive rail plan that is consistent with the quality of, requirement, quality of life requirements of needs of residents. And it's uh, the DPW director, town engineer, have been involved in this, actually, as well as I know Chairman Elfman has been involved in this discussion, and myself on, on many levels. Um, discussions in this area have led to at least five improvements uh, to the rail crossings in town. Three more are needed. Safety gates have been installed in the Concasset Street and Mechanic Street crossings. The ultimate goal is to try and get gate crossings for at all eight crossings in town in an attempt to pursue a quiet zone in, in, uh, in Foxborough. Um, those gates are expensive to do, and fortunately the state has picked up the cost for doing that in at least a couple instances so far. The improvements that have been made to the, to the crossings that have not had gates at least have the, the infrastructure in place to do that. So we could at least adapt those if we have to. So uh, we're pleased to be able to pursue that if we have to at some point, um, given, the, given the direction of that particular project. Clearly COVID-19 has limited our discussion, our ability to meet with people on that issue on a more direct basis. And finally, goal four is to protect and enhance the town, the town operations. Um, a is to, is to develop a truck binder. Uh, those that are familiar with the truck binder is, is more or less, we describe it as, as if somebody were to be, and excuse the expression, hit by a truck tomorrow, uh, there, would be st there would be a document in place to actually show how that job was performed before that person, before that, when that person left that day. So what we've done is develop these binders. We're in the process of doing it all over town, and, um, and, and including our own office uh, for each of the department's positions and putting us in a position to at least uh, know where to, where to go from there. The existing town manager has been leading that effort along with the department heads, and um, that work is, is well underway, including departments, including this department. This project is about 50 to 60% complete at this point in time. And um, on B, continue to maintain positive communications between town and school officials with a focus on succession planning for the approaching retirement of the town manager and the school business administrator. And the school superintendent, school business manager, and the school committee are involved in that discussion along with this board and, uh, and of course, uh, and myself. Uh, this is an ongoing dialogue where we meet, we meet on a regular basis and where we collaborate on a budget, IT and facility issues on a regular, daily, often daily and weekly basis, and also talk about what succession is going to look like. And so we've created succession plans effectively across the town on all key positions, including my own, as well as, you know, finance, as well as uh, public works, and as far as the police department, the fire department, the key operating departments. We have succession plans of virtually all of those. There are some departments we just don't have the capability to do that because we don't have enough staff to create that level of succession planning. But we certainly, we're going to do whatever we can to put a plan in place so we can have people step into a role in the event that somebody were to leave either through retirement or on their own. All right. Um, develop standard operating procedures for key elements required for town meetings. Uh, work with key officials to agree on steps that can be consistently applied and led to successful sexual meeting. Assistant town manager, executive assistant, the community information specialist, the town clerk, town moderator, town, town council, and board of selectmen have been involved in that discussion. This was completed this summer and it has been documented and, and has been documented as being the town meeting procedure manual, which we're following right now, by the way. So, uh, they continue to provide leadership to ensure the town's successful transition toward regional dispatch. Uh, so far, the, the, in, in myself has been involved in that discussion for mostly because 
everybody else has sort of you know been, been moved into that operation though police and fire have also played a supportive role in that as well uh, the new regional dispatch, dispatch center opened its doors in november with all four towns be, uh, operational as of today but as a matter of fact uh, the last town joined eastern joined this after uh, this morning and uh, so now we have all four towns operational out of the new facility located on High Rock Hill here in Foxborough. Um, support the collective efforts to create and implement a successful housing production plan. Uh, the Planning Director, Housing Advisory Committee have been involved in that, that effort as well. The housing production plan has been presented to for comment during the months of November and December. The plan will soon be finalized and now we'll have to have to now we will have to work with the plan and that has, that will take support from multiple town boards committees and the public at, at large so we, we we still have a lot of work to do this is just the initial stages of it but there are costs this is controversial there's no question about it there, there are folks that really understand the need but also there but the need it translates into impacts into into individual communities and it, and and people are, are concerned about it, that it tugs against the fiber of the of the, of the community itself and so our goal is to not change the, the change Foxborough, but to enhance Foxborough for so that the people that live here today can live here tomorrow, and the next generations can, can live afford to live here, as well as the generations that the, the seniors and the, and the young people can, can can move into those homes as well. That's a challenge right now that we're having a difficult time solving, and I, I think any level of discussion along this line is going to be controversial. And then uh, moving on to um, continue to evaluate town operations by identifying and, and, and correcting areas that are structurally deficient and can be improved and applying appropriate corrective and technological needs as needed. Uh, most recently, we have taken a look at the health department, determine what improvements can be made during the transition from the previous director to a new director, if one can be found. And we're working on that. We, fingers crossed, we'll be, we'll be lucky within the next few days. Hopefully, that'll work out. Uh, we are, we are work looking at technological improvements as well as some structural changes that will help the department be better achieve its mission, particularly during the pandemic conditions. And then, uh, G, refresh the town policy manual to ensure that all town employees, boards, and committees under the control of the town manager are compliant with its requirements. The assistant town manager, executive assistant, and committee information specialists have been working with us on this. This remains a work in progress. We, we do have several policies that we've updated. And uh, once we do that, I'm sure there'll be others that, you know, uh, uh, Chris and I were talking about one earlier tonight that maybe may require a policy that we, I don't see in, uh, listed anywhere, and that is the use of public property and, and who actually should give permission to use the public property when that issue comes up. And, um, and so we, that, we need to talk about that and, and, and what's the right process for that. Maybe, and I think it's not existent right now, in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases. All right. Um, so, and the, and the last two, ensure that, not, that all new processes and strategic improvements that are within uh, the realm of the responsibility of the town manager are successfully implemented within the agreed upon time frames. Town manager and other departments uh, as needed. All projects that we are aware of are either, either completed or on track for, for, toward completion by the end of this fiscal year uh, that we know of. And so there, there may be, um, and we're, you know, I'm going to be continuously track that to make sure that it's not a, not anything we're missing or we're off base with, but uh, but it's it's an ongoing process. And the same thing with the set set the example to lead with a culture of transparency, quality customer service, consistent and consistent follow up and follow through. Uh, this happens on a daily basis. Can we always do better? Yes, we can. Uh, that's something that we it's a it's a work in progress. But I will tell you that uh, we strive to do that on an ongoing basis, day in and day out, and it's the goal. Otherwise. It's the primary goal of our organization to make sure that we provide uh, high-level quality uh, service to the public, uh, as well as to follow through as much as we can, uh, given the circumstances that we're working under right now. So that is my update, uh, members of the board. I, I certainly am, am available for questions or comments, uh, or and and I do need your help in some of these because. You know, as, as much as we try, um, I could use your, your gui further guidance on some of these. Um, and I'm happy to have that conversation offline tonight. I don't need to do it tonight with you all, but if you have thoughts about any one of these goals in particular, we certainly can have that conversation. And I would, I would certainly appreciate your input and guidance on that. 
So as at this point uh, of the goals that we that we have in place, uh, four percent is uh, in the still in the planning stage. Seven percent is between planning and implementation. Uh, four percent is actually in between implementation and in process. And um, and then also and then but the majority of them, 23 percent is in process. 27 are, are in between process and on complete and ongoing. And 35 percent is actually uh, complete. Are ongoing, so we're we're con making continuous process, progress on this process as we go through them. But it, it's really important for me to know if we're on the right track here, because if you know, obviously I've, I've only got six more months, even less than that, really, to to make adjustments if I need to, or if I'm missing the mark or anything, I need to know it now, so I can readjust. But that's why it's so critical that when we when we sit to go through that process initially, that it's clear that what the goal is and what we're trying to do. And even though it's, it's, it may sound good and it may sound like a really good thing to, to try and achieve, it's sometimes very difficult to actually implement uh, on an actual, on a, on a practical basis. So we found it true with a couple items, but generally speaking, I think we've been able to, to, to stay on mark. Okay. That concludes my presentation. And I want to thank Christina for the, for the <laughs> graphics, by the way. She did a really terrific job with that. Great so PowerPoint. Thank you. Uh, All right, and, uh, any questions from the board? Do you anticipate meeting all your goals, or are there any that are just going to be not as easy as we well, all originally I don't, thought? I don't think that, I think we'll make progress on virtually everything. Uh, I don't know that we'll fully complete them all, because some of them are so like ongoing types of things. Yeah. You know, I actually but, like that last category, yeah. complete slash ongoing. ongoing. Right. Because mm -hmm. there's not a, a hard line where you stop and, right. yeah. and just not do anything more about it. You continuously look at that. Yeah, but and I, I'm thinking like more of the ones that were, you know, you had just started or, right. you know, not, not fully complete. So uh, I think the communications one is, is, uh, is the one that's going to take a little bit more work. And we're going to need that help. And, you know, I know Leah's had, that's been a big issue for her. And I think that we want to try and talk with her further through that a little bit more and see if there's anything else we can do to try and address what her vision is for that and what and then we can present it to the board and see what you think, what you all see think collectively. I think communication is always one of the hardest ones in any organization. It is. It is. No, there's no question about it. And, so. and the problem with communication is that everybody has a different perspective on what communication is and what it means. You know, so it, it could what could be perfect communication between me and you could be something that you're not hitting the mark with someone else. Mm -hmm. That's why it's something that's always, it's elusive in many ways. So I, I really, I'm always quick to point that out to people. Like, that may be good for you, but how do you think it's going to be, be received by someone else? Mm -hmm. So we have to constantly think about that and make sure that our message is being, you know, um, not, it, it's, it's, it's humanized, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Yeah. I think a lot of this is, it, it, it'll just change day by day anyhow because right something different comes up, right. different issue. So, you know, um, you know, you feel like you're in progress for most of it, right. and then all of a sudden there'll be a day that, oh, now we're, we're going back a little because there's something new right. that's just... Exactly. So um, for me, I think just the, the fact that we're trying and doing our best to, to yeah. meet these goals yeah. is, is good to be, just to be in with. Because no, it's, like a, it's, a said, it's a terrific yeah. exercise because I will yeah. tell you that we have to constantly think strategically about how we're doing things, and it, it, it forces me to, into that kind of a mode all the time, which is something I really enjoy doing, actually. And, I'm, I'm, and I really enjoy getting the input from others as to how we, because ultimately this is your community. It's not my community, it's your community. And you tell me how you want your community to run. And so far, I think we've, we've met your expectations in many ways. One of the things that, that um, is interesting, even though it's mentioned in bits and pieces throughout it, one of the goals, that we never even talked about was managing our way through COVID. As a key, and that's, to be honest, that takes probably the biggest amount of time that we work in right now because of how we have to work around things to make things happen. You know, my, a lot of my colleagues have been saying how they've had a lot of problem with main, keeping staff together. Well, we've had the same challenges. And it's just that, um, it's, just a, it's, the, it's the period we're in right now. It's a really, it's a big challenge. So. Leah? Leah? It's very clear, Bill, that you have spent a lot of time, you know, reviewing these goals and this summary. I think it's it's awesome. It, it really you. got me excited when I saw your PowerPoint. <laughs> and I hope that you found it helpful as well to, yes, to I know did. what you're working to and what the board wants. Um, you know, I I do think 
you know, Mike, as we look, come into the end of the year evaluation, we need to now tie this in to the end of the year evaluation that we normally use. I don't think we should use that stock form. We need to use this when we do our end of the year evaluation. Um, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but that's kind of how I think it should tie together a little, a little closely. Um, and then just, you know, Bill, I think as we go into, I think we'll review this one more time, you know, mm -hmm. as the final time, some of the goals were changed a little bit, no, no major meaning, but just mm -hmm. not the exact words that we had. Yeah. Yeah. And it does make it a little bit difficult to follow, you know, like the goals that, that we have here. So that would just be one little piece of feedback. And you know that I would love to help with the communication plan. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have some ideas kind of going back to, you know, before Christina was even here, mm -hmm. very specifically that we can, you know, look to maybe implement. Yeah, I think, I think on, on, on the document that you have that, that I've produced for you tonight, this is, this document, I, I did read some of the goals and some of them just weren't clear to me. And so I think I took a little bit of a, of, of a writer's li liberty to try and write them up in such a way that, that made sense. But maybe they, didn't, they weren't consistent with what you were, what you were looking to do. So I, if, if that's the case, then we can certainly adjust that. Yeah, like I said, no big deal. It just makes it easier to follow along. So maybe if you do change them a little bit, we can have the original goal and the amended goal, you know, even yeah. in the, the next iteration of the presentation. But, you know, it's clear that you are on track. It's, it's an amazing year to stay this on track given all the challenges that you've had. So thank you for, for, um, for this update. It's, it's really a great update for us in the community. Great, thank you, appreciate that. All right, uh, uh, great feedback, great, great update. Um, I think the fact that you had to um, put this together brings everything back uh, into focus uh, uh, from mm. the beginning where, the goal, where, where we right. first started with your goals, even though the craziness, the uh, left-hand turn with COVID uh, sort of uh, uh, centralizes you a little bit uh, right. as, as to your goals. And obviously, with, with as crazy as the world's become, for you to be this close on track is, uh, is outstanding to you and your staff, because uh, I know it's uh, a combined effort from from all the people you mentioned yeah. who helped you out That's right. with I, every step of those goals. And thank you for saying that because I, I, I can't say enough about the folks that we have here collectively, the departments, the employees. They're all very, very dedicated folks and, and, um, and we've been very, very fortunate to have such talented folks work here and be so supportive of the mission, if you will, that we're trying to put together here. And um, you know, it's, it makes my job a whole lot easier when everybody does their job, you know, in, in, the, in the true Belichick form. Everybody does their job, and, it, and then that makes, that makes the, the, the whole organization move such more, much more smoothly than it does. And so I really do appreciate their efforts. And I, this couldn't be done without their efforts, so I, I appreciate that. And, and you know, Lee, I'm, I'm gonna thank you too for sort of reminding us to do this. This was a, a great exercise, and mm -hmm. I think without your reminder, uh, it, and uh, because of the COVID situation, it could very easily have been pushed aside. And thank you for uh, bringing it back into focus. That's why so, we pay her the big bucks. That's why, she, That's, right. yeah. That's why she's working from the leather chair at home. That's right. <laughs> I, think, I think the most stunning thing about this, though, was, was the grant money. I'm just, I'm just floored by that. Almost seven million. Almost dollars. seven million dollars yeah. has come That's in. Just amazing. amazing. Yeah. amazing. Mr. Chairman, if I could uh, comment on this. So it's been quite a while, a couple of years, that Bill has been asking for board direction on these goals from the beginning of the year. And this has been very helpful, just uh, I'm speaking as an observer. Uh, I think this has been very helpful to get the policy direction of what does the community want, what does the board want of Bill. And um, while these are Bill's goals, they do filter down through the departments. What direction do you want your departments mm -hmm. to move in and to serve in? And, um, and I think it's been reflective. And, and I guess to answer Leah's question, uh, you know, first of all, the, the evaluation tool at the end of the, the year, you know, that's a contractual obligation between the town manager and the board. But I'm not going to evade your question. I think your question is valid, and I think this I think that this d does lend itself very well into using it as an evaluation tool. You, you see that it's got metrics, it is measurable, 
um, and it is pointed in the direction of what the community and board wants. So um, I think when it comes down to the contractual answer, the board and Bill need to talk about that um, because it is in his contract. But from an HR perspective, I think this lends itself very well into a measurable tool of what the town wanted and what the service providers uh, under Bill's leadership are delivering. So, well, I, yeah. I, well, I see, you know, from the, the, the basic um, template mm -hmm. that we've used in the past, that this could be very easily be play, put into that, right. take away the yep. generic stuff and put in the, 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 the meat stuff, the, the, the and, stuff and, that we get. Yeah. If, 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 I could, if someone could send me that form again, you know, I'm happy to take a first stab at creating like a new, you know, maybe we can pull things from each. And, yeah. and review that. Yeah, and, and now would be I a would, good time, Leah. If, if, I would, I would yeah, greatly, I would greatly that. appreciate you doing that, Leah, because I'm not a big fan of the the present tool, anyways. It's, to be honest, I think you could completely scrap the old one. <laughs> I think it would be easier to start new um, with this format and scrap the old format because it was it was really it didn't lend itself well to what we were trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah and but, that should really cascade down in my opinion to all departments so everyone should have goals and then be evaluated on those goals at the end of the year you know versus a bunch of generic ones that kind of apply to everyone so i know that's a longer term thing right. but i would love it if we scrapped that and we use this i think everyone will be happy you know bill mike yeah. and the board with that approach right. Hopefully we'll get it right before I leave. Right. <laughs> so so as, as complex and difficult as this one is, um, and, and I think it's the same approach for our other non-union employees, which is really the minority of our workforce, but that's fairly easy to do. Um, moving to the next step, um, you know, I would love to see us uh, retool our department head um, evaluations but those each have a contractual obligation. Uh, so steel, most of our, our uh, department heads are in the Steelworkers Union, and um, that's another, the evaluation tool there is, is wholly and completely useless. And I think that um, if, if our department heads were answering honestly, they'd have to agree. It's, it doesn't really lend itself to, uh, to really improving the work that, that they do. I think our, the, the work that our department heads do, including our, our chiefs and DPW director, is far exceeds the tool that, that we're using to, to actually measure them with. They, they far exceed that measurement tool because they, they're exemplary. Mike, when you yeah, say contractually, do you mean contractually that specific evaluation form yeah, the tool. has to be used or, or, or just an evaluation? So it's, there's two phases to that. First is the, you know, the agreement to have be evaluated, which is always a challenge for a lot of unions. But fortunately here, just virtually all of our unions are being evaluated now. So that's not the issue. But the, 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 then it becomes an issue of the tool itself. And oftentimes when, when you, start to, you start initially in that thing, you start off with a tool that you, go, but you, can get, you can get agreement on, and then you can move forward, at least get the process started. And then you make adjustments as you go forward. So I think that's what's where we're at that point now is that it's time to evaluate the tool and to get the, get the tool more measured, more in line with what we're actually doing as far as work goes. And then going forward, when uh, contracts come up, then you maybe uh, be something that discussion. the town brings forward that they would like to, um, you know, and a, I, think, I think a better tool benefits both, both parties. You know, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Couldn't, agree, couldn't agree more. You don't always get that same agreement on the other side of the table, but I will tell you that I think if you ask persons in the, on an individual basis, they will tell you that having a good tool is actually to their benefit yeah. and uh, not to anyone. Yeah. That doesn't take away from the, from the good performance. In, in the negotiating. Only other comment I want to make was um, just the responsibility of our board. We share that communication with you. We can't just throw this on you to say you need to have better communication, or, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. between you and your staff or department heads or even us. I think um, that responsibility falls on us as well to, you know, you're not it's a, a collective reader. process. It's yeah. a collective process. I agree with that. Yeah. Agree with that. One of the more recent adopted evaluation tools that was very successful was with the library union and it was 
a lot of that um, negotiation process involved trust building and, and, and saying that we are not going to use this tool as a weapon. We're going to use this tool as for professional development. And when we got to the point where the union members actually had trust in the library director and myself that that's what we really meant. Um, that's when we were able to move to a, a useful tool that was crafted to the work that they do. And we really came out with a, an awesome um, instrument. And it has benefited them. And, you know, they, it, they've not been hurt fiscally, you know, the employees. That's always the, the harm. Well, if, if they use this, that, you know, I'm not going to get a, a step or whatever, or I'm not going to get cola. Um, that, that didn't happen, so it wasn't used as a weapon, but what did happen was the productivity and the professional development of the employees that bought into that tool has increased. And that's where we want to go with these other ones, and I'd like to start that with our department heads. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Everybody's input right. was It was a good discussion. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was a great discussion. Uh, Mike, assistant manager. Mm. Sure. I have a couple of things. Um, so the, the search for our new um, director of public health is, is ongoing. And, um, you know, we, you know it's, it's, it's interesting because like with our, um, you know, I'm glad you got to meet uh, Barry Ringler, our new building commissioner. He's a, a unique individual that brings just, you know, incredible skill, as Bill mentioned, in, in zoning and um, in, the, in, the, in the code. And, but, you know, in that search, we, we really had some, um, some highly, highly educated, qualified uh, people apply, but they didn't have the right qualifications. And I mentioned at one of the former uh, board meetings, we had a couple of architects apply for that position, who I would have loved to have hired. You know, imagine having an architect as our, as our building commissioner, but they, they did not have no the licenses. qualifications no to actually stamp plans and to, to do certificates of occupancy, that sort of thing. Um, similarly, um, we, we've had folks apply for our director of public health position who have just incredible qualifications. I mean, you know, they, they would floor you, but they, but they don't meet the qualifications of actually going into restaurants um, and leading a team of folks that do, you know, septic and, and, and sewer inspection and stuff like that. So that's been part of the challenge, but we're, we're getting close. Um, uh, you know, as, as Chief Kelleher was talking about uh, finding the, the unicorn, that, that mechanic paramedic who, who does it all, We've been in search of that for DPW in the mechanics division, and uh, we have been in search of that mechanic since August, and and we we found a unicorn as well. We found a, a young man who is incredibly talented. Um, at 23 years old, he also has three of the seven ACE certifications, um, you know, and and he's just bringing. He's got a a, a technical education. And he's gone into the field, and we've we've pulled him from the private sector, and we're really really excited um, to bring uh, uh, Je um, Jared Boyce uh, to the community. And he'll be starting right after the new year, and uh, so we you know I'm happy to say we finally hired that that mechanic. Um, we also have advertised a collections coordinator position in finance. Um, Kelly has been with us for, for nine years and has served us really well. Um, and she has accepted a, a position, a similar position, for a little more money over in Mansfield. And, and we wish her well. Uh, but we are challenged with filling that position. Um, also, we've advertised the permit coordinator position to, to help Barry and, um, and Tom and Lisa and the team up there in building inspections. That's a 15 hour a week um, part time position with no benefits. Uh, it's a position we already had, but the person who filled it um, has decided through this COVID period to homeschool her children. So this, this is an open position. Um, and the last thing I want to say is uh, we talked a little bit earlier about fire and SEMREC and dispatch. And um, yesterday morning, I had the unfortunate uh, but fortunate occasion to speak with one of our SEMREC dispatchers um, when I was with my father and, and my mother. Um, went into a, you know, um, a, a very bad medical condition. And I made the 911 call and spoke with a dispatcher who was one of the most professional 
women I've ever spoken to. And, and she guided my father and I through what to do in the, in the four minutes uh, until the, the four paramedics arrived and kept my mother alive. And um, the experience of working with, with you know, Chief Kelleher's folks and, and Executive Director Verdone's uh, dispatcher, I don't know who she was, um, and kept my mother alive. Um, she, she actually went, went limp on us and her eyes glossed over and uh, today she's alive. And I hope tomorrow she is too, but I will say that the, that the extraordinary efforts of, of these highly, highly qualified people, um, I, I couldn't be more proud to serve with these folks. Thank you for that. That is, that, is, that is, first of all, great to hear. Second of all, um, grateful that your mom, mom made, made it through and, 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 and prayers that she continues to do well. Um, this is kind of a, a, a funny thing. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen this, I, and I wish I remembered exactly what the name is. There's a show that's on television now. It's about 911 calls. Has any, anybody happened to see it? I'm kind of a TV junkie, so. <laughs> and, um, so it's 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 um, it's real uh, nine one. Well, I think it's actors, but they're they're redoing a, you know certain calls, and it's amazing what some of these people truly mean to the other person. You know, when we're all put in a situation like that, it's it's scary. It, you know, um, you feel helpless, and these people mm -hmm. truly give you that. Um, I guess comfort and in and, and keeping you, you know, uh, aware that help is on the way and, um, and whatever, whatever they can give you to, to get you to help being there. So uh, uh, I've watched it a couple of times and it, it's, it's amazing. So um, uh, I hope we all don't have to go through, through what Mike went through, yeah. but it, it's nice to know that, um, that somebody has had that experience with um, our people yeah, and, that, and that's what you incredible. came away with. That's yeah, great. Incredible. Great. I, I didn't realize until yesterday um, that it, it's not just a communication piece and a connecting to the resources piece. Um, this, this woman, um, she truly had a life-saving piece and she was saying to me, every time your mother inhales, say now. And it was now, now, now. And it became quicker and quicker and quicker as her breaths became less and less efficient. And, you know, as she's having me do a very simple task, she's being able to, you know, I realized she's being able to relay to the paramedics on the way to my parents' house down on West Street um, what her efficiency of breathing is. And so that the paramedics that arrived there, they came in with all the gear. Um, they had the AED, they had the oxygen, they had everything, and, and this lady prepared these four young men uh, to come in and, and truly save her life, so I, I couldn't be more appreciative. Of it. And it's just reflective of how professional the workforce is that we have, and it's, you know, um, when it comes down to minutes, you want the best. Yeah, you are right. Thank you. Bill? Thank you for that, Mike. That was, uh, I know, difficult for you to, to uh, present that information because it hits so how close to home but um, I couldn't agree with you more I think I think that we now have a scenario where um, it's a different world than what we what we've been used to seeing and it's because the world has changed around us and, and I think now we've got we've responded to that with this kind of new approach that we've done and and, um, and, I, and I I can't wait for you to all get up there and see the new facility if you, if you get up there it's, it's like walking into NASA it really is. I mean, it's so it's it's state of the art in every way, way shape, or form, and yet you'll see and you have a true appreciation, true appreciation for what these people deal with, and the kind of training that they go through in order to hold those positions. So, we're truly really grateful for the efforts that they put in that area. Um, just a, a couple updates for you. The uh, first of all, the, on, on the gift front, uh, I had one eighty-five dollar donation offered to the town for the, for the Foxborough Fire Rescue. Uh, it came in on twelve fourteen. Uh, which was yesterday, and it was a donation for uh, $85 from Gerard F. Bliss, um, and it was a donation for, uh, just for the gift fund itself. All right. uh, the second thing I have on my list is the budget process, as I, as I noted earlier, is, is well on its way. Uh, everybody has submitted their, their requests for budget changes. The ClearGov system is, is light years ahead of where we were in terms of process, and it's going to make it so much easier. I know you're going to appreciate the information you're going to see when it comes out of it, it puts things in 
such easy readable formats that you'll just you'll be excited to see where it all goes and how we and how Marie and George have done a terrific job of sort of changing things around and, and changing up that whole pro approach. So we're, we're well on our way in, in making that improvement as well. Uh, we did open meeting a lot of training today. Uh, there was uh, a number of folks that signed up for it. We, you know, Mike and I signed up for it as well as I think Christina, you, you were part of that as well. Um, and uh, and there's, there was one today, there's another one in January, another one in February. Um, so I encourage all of you to try and take it because it is actually very helpful. It's, from, it's put on by the, the, uh, the AG's office uh, and it's very, it actually answers a lot of questions, uh, including the one that just yeah, recently came up. Invitation? Was that? Sorry. I don't, unless I completely missed it, I don't believe our board got that. No, we sent it out to the employees. So you'll, there's another one coming up in January where it, we're doing it through sections. Go ahead. It, it went to the boards oh, as did. well, but uh, yeah, it did. but we can mm -hmm. we can resend it. And they, the the attorney general's office puts on this webinar training uh, every month. And they only when we sent that out, they only had December and January scheduled. So there's one in mid January. It's 90 minutes. It's long. But it actually gets into the details of some of the things that were raised last time, which which was actually helpful. We it's did actually helpful for us. I don't think any of us knew that we're actually supposed to do a roll call when we have anyone right. out on remote. So we actually did learn yeah. some things. So actually, from the discussion two weeks ago, you know, it, it was productive for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. So, uh, but we'll resend that link to make sure that everyone has received that. Um, these these webinars um, all seem to be in the middle of the day. And so uh, there, there have been uh, a few board members, committee members that have reached out to me and said, I, I just can't take a day off from work to do this. Um, I'll work with them to make sure they can get it. Um, you know, if they just contact me directly, once I send the email, you know, I'll make sure that they can get the training and we get that um, documented. I did speak with the AG's off a contact in the AG's office, and they said that the February training will be at nighttime. So they try to all, uh, rotate it so oh, that other people great. can do it. I did have the the cultural Perfect. council, um, you know, wanted inquired that wanted to take it, and like, oh, well, we'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll figure out a way to do it. Can you send it to us? And so I contacted them, and if we wanted to do a training just for Foxborough uh, residents, we can set that up as well. So there's multiple ways great. for that well, to be done. Thank you, Christine. Okay, thanks, Mike, for clarifying that. Um, so the um, we're going to be off. This is the last meeting in in the year for the year for this board. Uh, your, your next meeting is not scheduled until next January. Um, so you're off for about three weeks, and so uh, we we work the schedule so that you would not so none of the holidays would interfere with the, with your schedule, and um, and give people some extra time off to to focus on uh, New Year's resolutions and and focusing get, get into January, a new year. We could use one right now. Um, We'll be closed at 12.30 on Christmas Eve, and of course all day on Christmas. Open all day on New Year's Eve, uh, contrary to what some people may think, we are open all day uh, New Year's Eve, um, and, uh, but we are of course off on New Year's Day. Um, uh, we did manage, I did re receive a report late tonight from Marie, who's, who's been managing the, uh, on top of all the budget stuff, she's been doing managing the, the CARES Act funds. And she said she was able to finalize all the CARES Act spending today, and we were able to spend all of the money that we needed to spend. So we didn't let any of it go to waste. So that was a good thing, and I appreciate everybody's efforts to make that work because that was not an easy thing to do. You know, some people think, oh, it's easy to spend $1.5 million. It's actually not. When you, when you hit certain things, and then you start looking for things, but then, there were, then, but then when you start looking, you know, peeling back the layers of the onion, so to speak, you find things that we should have put in for and which we did. And so we've actually managed to spend all of those funds and now we'll have to wait and see what happens with the next round of funding for that. And uh, it just a, a, a reminder that, that Thursday of this week, uh, it looks like a pretty significant snowstorm. I'm not sure if we'll be here. It doesn't look like it at this point because I saw the, I'm getting all, I'm getting all the warning signs from, the, from MEMA and everybody else that this is gonna be a significant storm. So it looks like we may not be here on Thursday, but uh, we've put a place, a, a snow a notification messages in place for all staff members. Um, if, uh, if, we, if we're not going to be open, we certainly will alert the public as well uh, through the best, way, best ways we can uh, on our website and on, our, you know, on, on cable and things of that nature. We'll get the word out as much as we can, best we can. Um, but the good news is that most people can shift to working from here to home. And so we'll still get some level of productivity from folks at home. And then good news, some final good news to report that the Bancroft case, the Bancroft appeal case on the fire station, 
uh, in the center of town. Uh, that case has been resolved. So uh, we do have a, uh, a informal meeting set up this week to try and look at the first step of, of uh, construction phase and or the first step we have to acquire the property first, they have to acquire the property first and then look at uh, the steps of that and we're going to try to outline where that, where that goes from here. But it looks like we could be into construction as early as, as, early as next year, early part of next year, uh, if all goes as planned. Okay. All right. All right. That's, all my, that's all I have. Uh, selectman's update, anybody? Yeah, I have something kind of tying on what Bill and Mike were saying. Um, I was um, actually going to reach out to you, Doc, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but I, I felt like uh, I brought it up at a meeting, so it was good to clear it up at a meeting. Um, you know, after I just uh, mentioned I was, that I had wondered if we had, had gone into violation, I reached out to the Attorney General's office, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, just a verbal verification, you know, so um, she's just going by what I said, I'm paraphrasing at what happened. Um, she was happily, she said that we were not in viol violation. And so I want to make that clear because I did have a couple of people reach out and say, well, did you guys violate it? And I said, no, 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 no. That wasn't my point. I was just questioning. Um, the only thing I want to say is it was good for her to say that we hadn't, but she did say where it wasn't by law violation um she said good practice for us is to not do that to not agend unless it's absolutely necessary she only it's only a recommendation as good practice um so i just want to sh you know be able to share and um uh also um not that i felt like i had to apologize to doc i was just as our board just you know inquiring if we had but um Rather, you know, where I brought it up here at the table, I thought it was best to make it perfectly clear. So if anybody uh, thought by my comments that we had, it's clear that we hadn't. And, um, and so I just thought it was good to bring that forward and, and uh, you know, what, what I had been told and, um, and clear the air just in case anybody at home um, ha had any, any uh, uh, question if we had or not. We, we absolutely did not. Um, and the other thing I want to bring up was I thought it was just kind of funny. Um, I don't know if um, Lindsay Morris reached out maybe to you, Christina. So it's a friend of Ryan's. So she um, texted me and wanted to know who our press secretary was. So I said, well, I said, I don't think we quite have a press secretary. I said, but um, I did direct her to reach out. She had a, um, a project that she was working on for school. So I thought it was just kind of cute that she wondered who our town press secretary was. So um, I hope it was okay, Christina, that I kind of led her in your direction and maybe you could help her out with that. So yeah, we um, had a nice Zoom call uh, last week and we talked about it. She needed to do a profile on somebody in communications and government and wanted to do it locally. So it was, it was a great experience yeah, for me and I, I enjoyed talking with her. And I thought, I thought it, w it, w it, was, it was great that she was able to, for something she had, uh, you know, for college, that she was able to reach back to her community and, um, and speak with someone that would help her out with something there. So. Um, uh, thank you for helping her out. She's a she's a nice kid. Thanks. All right, Leah. Anything? No, oh, you sorry. You're on mute. You're muted. I'm sorry. Say it again, Leah. We missed it. Just the old business that's listed there. No new business. Okay. I don't know if you're. Okay. Um, well, uh, the only thing I'd like to say to everybody is uh, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Looking forward to 2021. Mm -hmm. Hopefully everybody has a happy and healthy new year. Uh, uh, shop, uh, shop local winners, uh, Leah? Yeah, so I actually have two updates. I thought of a second one, two after. Um, the shop local promo was good. I think we're all excited about the billboard. If anyone got to see the billboard, the shop local mm -hmm. Foxborough, it's basically the same logo that you may see on some of the doors um, of businesses, town halls and such. So Paige, worked that out and we were able to get that free publicity. And then there were seven prizes total given, four were donated by Patriot Place, two by the Foxborough Common Business Collaborative. Um, and then a third one, uh, sorry, a seventh one by the Orpheum. So I think it shows a lot of different areas in town were able to come together for this. And I think it was, it was fun for people to be mindful to shop, dine and play locally and support the businesses that have supported our community. Thank you. 
So right. that was the first. And then the second one, I, I'm sure Paige would want us to plug her deadline coming up for the housing production plan. So December 18th is the final date to give feedback on the draft plan, either in all the directions are right on the um, town's homepage. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, just know that that deadline is approaching. I think we'll probably be one of the last televised meetings before that deadline closes. Great. Great. Thank you, Leah. Thanks, Leah. Uh, we got a bunch of action items. Um, Steph? All right. Motion to approve the 2021 Liquor, Common Vic, Entertainment, and Auto License Renewals. Second. Any further discussion? I know Katie's on. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Leah. I, I had just some questions too, but go ahead, Leah. Yes, Katie. Yeah, Katie and I connected on some questions I had earlier today, but um, just under discussion, if we're approving the spreadsheet that's here, we have just updated the manager on Red Robin. So just that change to the spreadsheet that we're approving today, it, it um, would just have to list that new gentleman that we approved this evening. Oh, you're on mute, Katie. You're on mute. <laughs> there you go. You're on mute. Give a second. <laughs> Sorry, um, so I, I actually have to wait for the ABCC to officially um, do their process as well. So it, first you guys vote, that was tonight, and then I'll mail everything to the ABCC um, tomorrow morning. Um, just like, for example, you guys had approved um, last meeting um, for the Foxborough Country Club. I didn't get that back till this morning. Um, so I will update that, of course, when that comes through. Yeah, I looked at that one. That one was updated on the spreadsheet. It definitely said John Gray, so. Right. Chris? Yeah, um, Katie, on this sheet, can you just go over a couple of the the acronyms or abbreviations you're using? Like I see under uh, all alcohol, RS, RS, RS. So what does RS mean? Yeah, sure. So those are just um, from the ABCC. I kind of just copy their license structure into this spreadsheet. So RS is just stands for restaurant. Um, PK is package store. Um, HT is hotel. Okay. CL is club. And the only VC on there is veterans club. Okay. Is a veterans club get a different rate than a regular club? Because I noticed there was a, di a different uh, price. They do. So a regular club um, for the Cockbox Box Broad Country Club, their club all alcohol license is $1,000, where the Veterans Club does get a discount um, at $800. Okay. Um, and then they also, their seven-day entertainment license for the Veterans Club is also discounted at $100 instead of the um, $250 for, for others. Okay. Um, thank you for that. That was I spent half the weekend trying to figure out. What it <laughs> Seriously, you um, just email me I was too, too stubborn to call and, and ask. Um, That's one, exactly what I called to ask earlier. <laughs> yeah. So one other thing that would make it easier, I think, going forward, and uh, maybe this is easier for you, but. Like when I started looking at this, I'm like, I didn't know what does Cupcake Charlie have a liquor license for? So maybe if we could separate all of the liquor licenses and then, you know, kind of like you have the, the car one separated on the second tab, maybe just have like tabs on this. Um, so other than that, I mean, a lot of work. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, and I, I can definitely separate that out. I know it's really confusing. I kind of just look at it every day. So I think it's kind of just like in my brain. So I apologize, apologies for making it too confusing, but I wanted to give you as much information as I could. And then you guys could tell me how to, you know, kind of move forward. So yeah, no, so I mean, it's it, no apology necessary. I would just have it broken into all the different categories there are. Um, it might be just easier to view it that way. I, this is one of the most organized I've ever seen this, by the way. So, yeah, so I appreciate your work on that, Katie. It was good. Yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm good. Is there, is there anything else to talk about with the one exception that's listed in the motion? Do we need to discuss that at all before we? Yeah, sure. Um, so we the, we did separate out um, the olive and mint license only because basically for all licenses, I work with finance, um, Kelly in particular, to just kind of go over what invoices are due. Um, and we make 
we both make sure, um, you know, everything is, is paid up to date before I actually hand them the license for 2021. Um, but with Ambrosia, they did have a significant amount due in, um, in invoices due to the town. So it was Bill and Paula working on a payment plan. Um, so that is kind of just the reason why we separated those out. And I know we had the same issue last year. So I know when, I know you weren't here, Katie, but basically when it came to the 2020 license, it was a similar um, issue with them. Does any of that go back into like 2019 or is it all current year stuff that's late? Oh. Bill, do you want to, do you know the breakdown? Of, I just only, yeah, I don't know the um, exact the answer to that. Amount. Leah, I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you without looking at it uh, in depth, but I, I will tell you that we've spent, we, we had a, a very significant conversation with them about this and, and one of the things that we've made abundantly clear to them is that any outstanding balances they have have to be resolved this year uh, because it's been it's been uh, this this actually happened long before COVID even occurred so it's not this is a COVID related issue this is a this has happened long before this happened so one of the things that I, that I, I worked with Paula on and Paula's the only one can actually make a, a payment plan because it, it, on the state state statute she's the only one who can do it so but she's asking my what my thoughts were. And my guidance I gave her was that like you know, we got to at least have a one third of the, of the of the debt paid by the time by at least by the time be, uh, before before the end of the calendar year, and uh, so they are actually working on that and they made a significant payment towards that today, and so they have about two weeks left and if they don't make that payment, then my 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 I I've told them unequivocally that if you don't make the, if you don't meet that minimum payment requirement we're going to hold a hearing, I'm going to bring it back to the board, have the board hold a hearing on it and determine whether or not they should be continue to hold the license. Because um, at this point in time, it's, it's they've proven a couple of years now that they have not been able to be, you know, have not uh, kept their their business up to date. And I think that's something that's in, that doesn't happen very often in Foxborough. And everybody here is under the same limits and restrictions that everybody's been going through. And everybody else is making their effort to try and do that. So we have to maintain that standard if you will in order to to make sure that that um that you know licenses are, are kept up to date in terms of outstanding balances to the town we don't want a lot of people following that that same kind of pattern it's clearly so that we're taking a very strong approach with them uh, for obvious reasons you know we want to make sure that uh, the town is uh, is first in line to get its payment and next the next uh, to make sure and this is where we have the leverage the greatest leverage right now is to hold the license until that actually happens so I'm, I'm happy to take further input from the board on this one, but I think it's a conversation. I know this this is not part of the motion right now, Katie and, and, and Leah, so and when we get to that issue, maybe we can have a further discussion about it, but I just wanted to know where I stand on that. All right, yeah. so if we, have a, if we have a question on that motion. Yeah, let's we, finish. We'll, we'll hold yeah. off on, we'll hold right. off on next that. motion yeah. anyway. Okay. So yeah. let's, okay. uh, yeah. let's finish this one to keep it uh, focused. Are you okay, Leah? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, so we uh, had a motion. It was seconded. We had further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and, uh, Roll call vote. Oh, yeah. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay. Okay. So, I'll read this motion first, so obviously, yep, right? There you yep. go. Yep. All right. Motion to approve the annual all alcohol beverages, common Vic and entertainment license for Nervy Inc. <laughs> Doing business as Olive and Mint on the condition that all taxes and outstanding payments due to the town are made by December 31st, 2020 at 12.30 p.m. or that an agreement up upon payment plan has been established with the town's revenue officer by December 31st, 2020 at 12.30 p.m. Second. Wanting Further to discuss. discuss. <laughs> So just so what's obviously when we found out there was an outstanding bill due to the town, uh, I called them and asked them to come in and had a meeting with them, uh, with the with the father and the son who owned the property, and, and we had a very lengthy conversation about that. I said, look, you know, uh, this is the second year in a row this has happened now. I said, um, I said, you know, we're at the point now whether we're starting to wonder whether or not this is worthy uh, for you to have the license if you're not going to maintain payments on it. So then they, the conversation was, well, they, they, they know obviously they, they're in a tough spot because of, of uh, the situation we're in collectively with, with the limitations placed on business owners. 
And so there's some level of understanding on that, but as I said before, this, this occurred before COVID even happened. So this is not just a COVID related issue. Um, so I think uh, that's, so I, I told them, look, they, they, were, they do have options available to them, um, in which I won't, get, I won't get into at this point because I don't think it's appropriate, but, but they do have options available to them and we've encouraged them to try and pursue those options. And um, so far they have not been able to, to get that, but they did come up with a very significant down payment towards that today, which they did show good faith. And so I, I, the way I'm, I'm approaching this is that like, I think they have to meet the minimum requirement by December 30th, December 31st. And then after that, and with of course, your, it's the board's decision of this, not mine. But I, I'm just, my, my advice to you is to, is to hold their feet to the fire and say, look, if you don't meet the payments every month thereafter, that we hold a hearing on them to determine whether or not they're worthy of keeping a license. Because I just do think that I can't, I don't think you can let this, this continue to slip. It's, it's just, uh, it, the, 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 first of all, the license is too valuable, number one. And number two is that we don't want to have, it in, have a license in, a, in, a, in the hands of a, of a person that's not going to make, maintain their, their, their obligations to the community. So are we talking like missing the water bill or back taxes or? Both. Just, okay. Both. Okay. And it's a six figure number. And are we only talking for 2020 or are we talking before that? Because my understanding last year, was when they got that everything was up to date now so if we're kind of kicking the can down the road and we don't have to go into those details here i'm fine with you sending it to us kind yeah, of offline I, like I, said, Leo, I don't know the answer to that i, I i'm guessing that it goes uh, it may be some maybe some the water bills may have extended beyond this year into last year but i think the taxes are mostly for this year so i think they've not been very good about you know bringing themselves up to date on the taxes now what happens is if, if, we, if they're going to tax title, then, then, the, uh, then the cost of, of paying that off is going to be extraordinary to them. It's like 18%. So uh, I've encouraged them to look at it. You're better off to try and find a way to pay that with a much lower interest rate than you are to, to leave it outstanding. And so um, they have, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out a way to do that, obviously. So there is a built-in incentive for them to do it, but um, at the same token, um, they've got to show good faith here, and I think that's what we're trying to get them to, what the position that we're trying to get them to. So when we say taxes, so either to Bill or possibly to Katie, um, so, um, I mean, obviously, I'm assuming when, when uh, Chris just asked about water and taxes, so we're talking property taxes. Yes. Um, are there also um, uh, taxes possibly due to the state and food and beverage tax. When, yeah, when a we, restaurant pays that, does the, does the state bring that extra little piece, that three quarters of a percent that comes to the town? Is that, in, does that payment come then from the state to the town? The state, that, that gets paid directly to the state. Okay. Right? And then, then it gets turned around to the town. So I don't know what their position is with the state, but if, okay. um, if, the, uh, if they, they were in default, we would know about it because they, they would notify Katie Okay. If, if there was an issue with that and they would sell, tell them to hold the license until then but, so we're not aware of that at this point yeah. in time so, so and, we, and we, we wouldn't know what was owed to us until the state made a payment to us right and and, and, our, and quite honestly process. i'm not sure that that's i don't have a whole lot of faith in that determination at this point because the things are backed up at the state too yeah you know because not everybody's working you know at, at the offices every day either so i don't know if they're up to fully up to date on that situation either yeah. But I don't, I don't want to second guess that because we don't have anything to prove that. Yeah. Well, well, I, oh, I, I, well, why I was asking too is because um, uh, before Jimmy worked for the town, Jimmy was in in hotel and, and mm -hmm. restaurant, and and um, that that taxes owed by whether it's a hotel having to pay to the state, um, they don't mess around. That snowballs That's exactly right. yeah. very very quickly. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was just I was just curious if um, you know if I don't really know it's our business or, or if they're in trouble with the state, but in turn that's also monies that would be coming coming to us too. Eventually, yes. Eventually, eventually yeah. but um, but in yeah. terms of, in terms of answer, yeah, there's not much we can do about that. That's something that they deal with. Yep. The Department of Revenue deals with them on that. Yeah. But in terms of what's owed to the town, that certainly is your your jurisdiction, and I and I and 
And I think, you know, I don't want to over two step too far in terms of your role here because uh, just, I'm just trying to make sure that we put the right plan in place to get the money back to well, the town. I have, oh, no, you go, I have you two go ahead. Points. I asked two questions, right? <laughs> I have two questions. One, um, well, thoughts. If we approve this, can we get a monthly update? You could. On yes. where they yeah, are. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think we should put that, um, you know, somewhere, maybe under your report, yeah. under manager's update, um, you know, where are they? Yeah. And two, if they continue to be in default, what is the process? Do we now put their license on hold? Do we have a hearing? You have to hold a hearing. You can't do anything with a license until that happens. So, so, um, so let's say uh, so, uh, February, they're still way behind. Um, well, unless there's a plan in place. Now, the, 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 the state does allow for you to have a plan in place with the treasurer, the state, the town treasurer. That, that, does, that is allowed. So that's you know, well within the right. So that is the standard approach to let them have a plan, but it has to be approved by the treasurer. So what happens is that if they if they don't keep up with their payments, though, that's when it becomes problematic. Right. And what should so, we do proactively if so that I, should happen? I think that you I, I think I report back to you that they're behind again. And then if they if that happens, then we then I ask that you hold a hearing on it. Okay. Did we do something similar to this last year? I don't yes. remember. Did we did we? So did why we? Yeah. are we, we okay. just continually year after year doing this? I mean, if they're, if the number is as big as you alluded to, six figures. Uh, I mean. Well, ultimately, I think if, if you, first of all, I, that's a that's a determination you all have to make. In other words, if you, I mean, I can tell you he did make a significant payment today. Um, it was a rather substantial payment, actually. So, but it, but it wasn't, didn't meet the, the number that I'd asked him to make, which was, uh, which was so about, third. about, about, uh, about ten thousand dollars shy of that. So, but he did in indicate that he was willing to come back in another week or two with, with an additional amount to try and take care of that. That would meet the requirement for at least until the end of this calendar year. Now, next year is a different year. I just don't want, and I think it's great to have a mechanism in place because. If we don't have a, a mechanism in place to keep verifying it and checking it, then we will. Then we. Then we. Then what happens is we end up with, in the same situation next year, where he doesn't. The, the problem is that he could pay it all up, right, and then turn around and not not be up to date with his current taxes. I think, uh, Chris, if we have a monthly update. Well, the, well, the other thing too is we're being asked to approve this, with either it being paid off or a payment plan, but we don't know what the payment plan is. So I guess like. Are we allowing him to his payment plan if it's already designed? Is it you know X amount a month for 12 months, or is the yes. paid off in three or five or six months? The plan, because it is substantial, would be over 12 months. Now, the reason why um, um, we have to do it that way is because there is no business right now, so we have to be realistic about that as well. You know, so I think what yeah, the, the we issue be the same is, spot next year, so he'll just have caught, or he or she will have just caught up. And he could, he could conceivably year. be in that position. That's a decision you're going to have to deal with. If you, as a board, don't th don't think that's a that's a problem for you, then bring him in. So, so basically, what I was going to ask. So, um, I, I know the name has changed a number of times up there. Um, but these are the st same owners of that property. That have been there for quite some time. The one they were there last year, at least last year. I'm not 100% oh, okay. sure if they okay. if they were, and not not the same ones that have been okay. there for, for a long, they, long time. That originally no. owned Dimitri. I heard they. Yeah, came it wasn't. Back it's in. not Dimitri. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's but, not Dimitri. Okay, no, because basically what I was going to say, not that it really matters. Um, you, we have to do what's um, best for the town, but um, I'm glad that at least um, through Katie and yourself, Bill, that you've at least given them um, the best. Uh, that you could advice that you could give them to get them you know we hate to see anybody lose lose a license or have a license suspended and uh, especially in these times but of course you know we have to do what's best for the town so I'm glad that you guys have just given them some some guidance and and it's nice to know that Paula has at least given them an opportunity to to uh, make you know to put the payment plan in into effect and then I guess let's see what they do with we'll have it. to see so, what happens so really the payment plan Chris's point is going to be double. It's going to be their normal 2021 and their catch up of 2020. That part I don't theoretically, know. Theoretically, I, I mean, I do, yeah, yeah, theoretically. I don't yeah. know that for a fact, but 
I know that it's, yeah, I just don't know that answer. I, I, I think I'd like to see you mention something every month where they're at. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I mean, I think if, you know, just we'll pick a number, say the payment plan is 10 grand a month. If they miss a month, I think we need to put it on our agenda to have yep. all of them in here and basically whatever the steps. I know you can't just take their license, but. I would, I would go so far as to say this. I think we put the payment plan in place and then you call them in here in January and you tell them in no uncertain terms, if you don't make this pay payment plan, we're going to have you right back here about the, quality, the status of your license. That makes I it abundantly that, clear. That's right. a good yeah. suggestion. And, and what, what you guys have put into place yeah. now is right. you, you wanted to see at least a third of what was owed yes. by the end of the year. Right. So that's already already there. Yeah, and the then, works on doing that right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and I think by doing it that way, it, it puts it it, it reemphasizes re the significance of the actions that I'm asking them to do, and the board supports it as well. Because they're sitting in front of us. Right. I think that's uh, let's put that on uh, yeah. a January agenda. Yeah. Uh, either yeah, the first the, meeting. The fifth or, or the nineteenth. I'd yeah. say the fifth. Start that a year off. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And did they pay the fee, Katie? Forget like what they, they did pay the fee. Um, I did not deposit that with finance yet, only because I wanted to wait to see what you guys were going to do. Because it's just a lot easier to hold it than have the town issue them a check back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody comfortable yeah. with with our plan going forward? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the only last thing I would say is just you know, there's businesses on here that aren't even open that are adhering to staying. You know, um, up to date with everything. So right. I just think we need to be weary about setting a precedent that getting a year behind and then having a year to pay it off is oh, acceptable. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Lee. And I think uh, the fact that bringing them in, in in January is a good first step. Because Bill brought that up too. You know, there, there's people with licenses to to have parking spots down at uh, the stadium, and I don't think anyone's defaulted. And uh, there were no games this year, so uh, yeah, that's right. a very good point. Yeah, and, and I don't think the town needs to be in the practice of this. This is, you know, a one-shot bailout type of scenario. Um, we shouldn't be doing this every year. Yeah, I, I Especially agree. Especially for the I agree. same one. I mean, if it's the same, and, and it's this is the second time this particular operator has done this, so um, my patience on as strong with these, this group as I am with others, obviously, because as, Katie, as, as uh, Leah correctly points out, I mean, there are a lot of people really come into the table to help and do their their part and if if they don't do it then i'm sorry but you know that's the responsibility of a license holder and obviously it's, it's like you said it's not a covid issue so um i mean it is covid related but it's not well, entirely well, COVID related yeah. yeah well you didn't I get mean, to that point last year wouldn't have been right you didn't, you didn't get to that point unless uh yeah. okay. only strictly on covid basis yeah all right uh we had the motion it's seconded we have further discussion uh, all those in favor Aye. 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 Roll call vote. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> See what you made us do, Leah? <laughs> By not being here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go ahead, Steph, next one. Right. Uh, motion to approve the petition for a conduit location of Verizon New England to lay and maintain underground conduits and manholes with the wires and cables to be placed therein under the surface for East Belcher Road and Springbrook Road to provide for a distri distribution of intelligence and telecommunications. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Yeah, so just, yes. Mr. Chairman, just going on to the back of the licenses, I know Katie's looking here with bated breath, uh, that, that there, there's also the auto deal licenses under re license renewals. Did we miss one? Yeah, it's, it says it's under overall renewals, board license approval, uh, approval. it's under uh, renewals and then auto, li auto deal licenses, class one, two, and three. No, that was taken care of in the, in the first motion. With that everyone. was the first was motion. It, was it in there too? Yeah, yeah okay. we had an yeah. auto right. Is that, was that what you Are you waiting for something, Katie, beyond that? You're all set? No, no, no. Okay, I, good. All right. um, okay. I got one more action item, then I'm out of here. Okay, great. <laughs> no, I just I thought, I just didn't know if you were looking for that as well. Okay, so, so that's, sorry, sorry to interrupt. No problem. 
Love All right, so three. We're good. Next I'm, one. I'll make a motion to adjourn. No, no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You still got to wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We have a lot more to go. Yeah, we <laughs> Christina's like, oh. <laughs> Christina's like, Stephanie, what are you doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, motion to approve extended liquor license hours for Davio's Northern Italian Steakhouse at Patriot Place for all Sundays in 2021 for brunch alcohol service to begin at 10 a.m. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, motion to approve extended liquor license hours for Wormtown Brewery at Patriot Place for Sunday, January 3rd, 2021 for brunch alcohol service to begin at 10 a.m. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, does Wormtown actually sell food? They, they're, 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 that's the farmer's license. That's the, where, where they don't, they, they actually have it set up so that they bring food to the location. So it allows and we did confirm they do have a menu. Last yeah. time this came up, it yeah. wasn't that long ago. Okay. You all can right. go to yeah, the website. They order out from all the area restaurants. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, as it's, long it's, as there's food. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good question. One other quick question. Um, are the so say Wormtown and then the Renaissance. Um, are they planning on doing this every Sunday? Was uh, Davio's the only smart one to ask for every Sunday? Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just think so, so we'll probably, probably... They may come back to you. Yeah, yeah okay. A couple just, of these were carryovers from previous ones, but you did not want to approve a 2021 without approving an extended hours without approving the 2021 all licenses. So that's why okay. it got pushed to here and it's being yeah. added now. All right, thanks, Christina. Uh, did I do, oh, motion to approve extended liquor license. No, we got oh, it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. No, we got it. All we right. just got to uh, vote. Yeah, all um, those in favor? Aye. aye. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yeah, yes. Now we're doing 11-5. Right. Yep. A motion to approve extended liquor license hours for Renaissance Hotel, a Patriot Place for Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, for brunch alcohol service to begin at 10 a.m. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris, Roll yes. Call. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yeah, yes. Motion to approve extended liquor license hours for Lakeview Pavilion for all Saturdays in 2021 for brunch alcohol service to begin at 11 a.m. Second. Uh, further discussion? I have a question. Um, so all Saturdays in 21. Okay, this is just an anticipation of um, right now they really, are they doing any business up there because of the numbers? They're not doing much of anything right now. Yeah. I think it's for weddings and, you know, if they come back and, yeah. you know, I, th I think in the past, like going back maybe 10 years ago, the board maybe didn't want to just approve every Sunday for brunch. But I, I feel like I don't want to speak for the board, Katie, when you talk to these applicants, I would almost encourage, you know, if they think they're going to do brunch and it's one hour every Sunday, rather than coming back to us every date. You know, I, I personally kind of like how Davios and Lakeview do it. Yeah. I was yeah, the same thing. to be honest, the between I think Christina would agree. I mean, it's going back and forth to make sure their letter is correct and having the right information. And even, you know, Christina is really great about, you know, checking their date, even like some people still had, you know, 2020 when they were really asking for 2021. So it is definitely difficult, um, but it's definitely something I can encourage when, you know, they come to pick up their licenses. You know, if you know this is going to happen do it in kind of one full swoop in the beginning of the year. Um, I know it is hard, like if they're doing like those UFC fights, you know, like Jake and Joe's is that a lot, CBS, Scorpion. So maybe they don't have those schedules out or, I mean, even now during COVID, I don't know if they know they're, if they're even gonna do things like that. So, but I can definitely encourage them to do it if they know it well in advance. And we, we did follow up with a couple who had requested it previously and said, all right, just wanted to check, can you update your letter so it has the, the correct date? And they actually said, you know what, we're not gonna do it. We don't, you know, we're not getting the, the customers or the staffs or, you know, availability, so they just canceled it. So they're just making business decisions based on, you know, what they can do and what's best for them. So those places were Saga and Splitsville, CBS scene and Scorpion. So tomorrow, should the board um, go to approve um, all of these four requests. I'm going to notify um, Foxborough PD just so, so they're aware that, you know, these four places did not come back just so they're aware um, and to maybe do some 
stop ends. Great. Thank you, Katie. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Yeah, yes. All right. Motion to approve the August 4th, 2020 minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Yeah, yes. Motion to approve the September 1st, 2020 minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Yeah, yes. Motion to approve the September 15th, 2020 minutes. Second. Any further discussion? Just under discussion, I wasn't here, so I'm gonna abstain. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Stephanie, yes. Mark, Paul, yes. should I let you abstain first? Or? Do I have to abstain in, as in roll call? Yes. You Chris say, abstain. All, all those abstaining? <laughs> <laughs> Chris abstaining. Yeah. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. This was yeah, yes. The record. Do you want to say anything before I make the motion to adjourn? we're good. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Happy all holidays, those, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Mark, yes. Do the thing. Yes. Ed. Yes. Leah. Leah, yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Have a happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Bye, everybody. All right.